Psalm 50 verse 5, the last function before we get to the word tonight. The Bible says, gather unto me my saints, they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Now, it's a culture in this ministry that um, at the closing of the meeting, we provide an opportunity and we challenge people um, to sow with understanding into the ministry. Uh, there's always an end of year sacrifice, not necessarily today, all through within the time of the break, as God would lay it in the hands of people. We believe in giving, but we believe in giving that is done from a standpoint of love, non-manipulative giving. And um, the Bible allows believers to be part of kingdom advance. And so this is, is very, very important. Um, so we'll give this opportunity again, um, not necessarily today, but all through within the time of the break into January. It's a culture as a ministry. We call on all who have been blessed and um, lifted and changed, transformed through this ministry to be part of this as God grants them the grace. Um, all sacrifices and all seeds um, will be collected in our central account. There's no proxy. There's no giving to people. I'm saying this in advance because usually when announcements are made like this, you will have all these funny people begin to arise. Um, the accounts should be displayed and will be displayed. And you can have it down. And as God grants you the grace, you can sit as a family, as individuals, and trust God to just minister to you what you will give. Now, this is very important. Please listen very carefully. Um, the end of year sacrifice seeks to do three things. Number one, it is, it is your expression of thanksgiving. It's a sacrifice of thanksgiving in recognition um, of all the things that God has done in our lives. God has been merciful. Many of us have received all kinds of breakthroughs. And so we come with that seed of sacrifice. Number two, um, it is part of your commitment towards kingdom advance. I believe that believers have a responsibility to stand to see that the purposes of God be advanced. There is no magic about what happens to the resources that believers give. It adds to the overall resources that are used for kingdom advance. And so it's always an opportunity for believers to sow knowing that for every soul that is saved, life transformed, and every contribution towards kingdom advance, it is recognized in heaven. Number three, it is a prophetic connection um, as a way of communicating your expectations to God. I believe that with all my heart. When you connect with understanding, you release your faith, believing God for that which you would do. Uh, let me tell you something. I have discovered that believers are not greedy, globally speaking. I used to think believers are greedy, but I don't believe that anymore. The problem usually is the integrity with the management of the resources of the kingdom. When people sow seeds, when they commit resources and you know people divert seeds that are meant for kingdom activities into personal um you know personal gains and all of that this is usually where people are discouraged to give and all of that but i believe that people always give and will give when it is number one non-manipulative non-manipulative Giving from the standpoint of manipulation, I tell you, it's a waste of time because there is no reward for you. Praise the Lord. Giving under threat to give, otherwise this, it's, it's not, it's not, manip it's a manipulative kind of giving. There's no blessing. The Bible says, if there be first a willing heart, a willing mind. Are we together? So it is important by God's grace, we are people of integrity, uh, even as a ministry, all of the blessings of God you see upon my life and upon our lives have come as products of a thorough understanding of the systems, the financial systems of the kingdom, alongside the grace to 
appropriate the keys that should be to make for the blessings of the Lord upon our lives. You can prosper with the dignity of kingdom integrity and, um, and with honor. And this is what you see. If there is anything at all that looks like the blessing of God upon our lives, it is credited to the intelligence of the ways of God that makes for that possibility. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So please, um, we're challenging and calling on everyone, businesses, individuals, our friends, partners, sons, daughters, ministries, um, all around the world who follow us sincerely as the Lord grants you grace, um, do well to support, do well to give. Please understand that what you are doing is not a donation. What you are doing is a connection with understanding. Um, you donate to a social welfare platform. This is a spiritual platform that brings real results when the principles are engaged with understanding. Are we together? Praise the Lord. Let's pray in advance for this end of year sacrifice. Lord, we thank you. It's an honor and a privilege to give. It's an honor and a privilege to sow. And we stand in agreement with the millions around the world who have been blessed lifted touched transformed saved healed in and through this ministry and lord we thank you for the opportunity you are providing for us to be part of kingdom advanced we are grateful for the participation of the saints and lord we pray that you who is the supervisor of your laws may you bless and reach everyone according to their needs in the name of jesus every seed that is sown in honor to this um this announcement i pray that it will return to the givers a thousandfold in the name of jesus may the lord bless everyone who is a faithful giver may the lord bless everyone who is a participant and a partner with what god is doing and may we all go from glory to glory in jesus name i pray are you ready for the word just a brief admonishment acts chapter 2 well thank you jesus acts chapter 2 we we'll start from verse 36 the lord put this in my heart and tonight's teaching will really really bless you it's an admonishment but it will bless us acts chapter 2 from verse 36 this this is this is apostle peter um at the upper room now this is the first official salvation message after the holy ghost came therefore let all the house of israel please follow carefully know assuredly that god hath made the same jesus whom ye have crucified both lord and christ 37 now when they heard this they were pricked in their heart and said unto peter and the rest of the apostles men and brethren what shall we do peter is responding now 38 then peter said to them repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of jesus christ for the remission of your sins and ye shall receive the gift of the holy spirit 39 is where my message is coming from for the promise let's read together for the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off even as many as the lord our god shall call one more time uh-huh even as the lord this is a very interesting scripture because this is the first salvation message and peter is letting the body of believers then and prophetically everyone know that the promises of god this included is not for certain individuals he says the promise is unto you number two unto your children number three unto all those who are far off was talking about the gentile nation now then he says as many as our lord shall call very powerful very very powerful revelation the promise is for all not for few 
the promise not for men of god the promise not for americans not for british people not for africans this is a powerful revelation because until we understand that in christ there is a central platform that allows all and sundry access to the possibilities of the kingdom are we together now the proposition that makes it look as though there are individuals who have been isolated from the experience of the kingdom is a very dangerous communication the promise please keep that scripture for us is first for you everybody says for me then for your children and then to all that are far off even as many as the lord will call second scripture acts chapter 10 please we'll start from verse 34 to 35 i'm establishing first and foremost the centrality and the neutrality of god's operation when it has to do with the saints that there is an equal platform for the saints to be able to partake of the reality of the life and the power of the christ regardless of background regardless of sentiments that when we come to christ there is a level playing ground that allows any believer who is interested to be the partaker of the reality of the experience of the kingdom acts chapter 10 we we'll start from verse 34 now peter this was after the holy ghost fell upon the gentile nation are we still together say amen, amen. then peter opened his mouth and said of a truth i perceive that god is what no respecter of persons in other words there is no favoritism as it were with him next verse but in every nation africa hear this in every nation including africa in every nation including nigeria he that feareth him and walketh righteousness is accepted with him that means that every possibility in the kingdom is for the taking of all please understand this that in the economy of god there is no default preferences that attempts to victimize any individual not on spiritual grounds not on grounds of career not on grounds of maybe wealth and all of that there is no such thing with god the reality of the christ life puts a neutral ground for anyone to be able to become everything destined by god this is a revelation as we end the year it's 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 a reminder for some and it's a revelation for others two more scriptures romans chapter 10 and verse 12 romans chapter 10 and verse 12 the bible says apostle paul now is teaching for there is no difference between the jew and the greek for the same lord everyone please read with me the same lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him the same lord rich unto an american like he is unto an african rich unto the south as he is unto the north as he is unto the east are we together now i'm establishing the fact that everyone's destiny please listen to me in christ everyone's destiny in christ depends on their knowing god and they are activating the truths of the kingdom there is nobody who excels by default there is nobody who succeeds by default when it has to do with dealings the dealings of men with god there is a level praying ground for everyone the last scripture hebrews chapter 4 and verse 16 you know we come from all kinds of families and some of us have been indoctrinated by our sociological contexts into believing that we are disadvantaged listen to me very carefully you may never understand how destructive that understanding is that you sustain a thinking that there are people who never believe god can speak to them directly 
There are people who never believe that they can know God on their own. There are people who never believe that they can experience the power of God and the grace of God. There are people who never believe they can prosper in this life. No. We have all kinds of subliminal communications that have come from our backgrounds that continue to plant dangerous perspectives. I've done a lot of teachings on mindsets and strongholds, and this is one of such teaching. He said, let us therefore come boldly. Everybody say boldly. boldly. Unto the throne of grace. Let us, not let some, everyone, come boldly to the throne of grace that we, as a corporate body, may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. The throne of grace is accessible by everyone and anyone in Christ. In fact, including sinners. So the Bible says, let us all come to that throne of grace. Are you getting what I'm saying now? These four scriptures show us the centrality and the neutrality of God's dealings with men. In God's economy, there are no superiors to others by default. Follow me closely. There are no favorites as it were. The same Lord is rich unto all. The Bible talks in the book of Jude, I think, of what he called the common salvation. Common salvation. There's no special blood that speaks for Joshua Selman or speaks for the, the, uh, what the, the president of any nation. No, it is the same blood that was shed for everyone. Are we together now? Yes. There is no individual who can rise to the fullness of the potentials in Christ when you believe that there is a sense of inferiority in fact this is Kenyon's definition of righteousness he defines it as the ability to stand in the father's presence without a sense of guilt inferiority and then condemnation the key word there is inferiority that when i stand before god and you stand before god based on that which has been provided for by the christ we stand from the same platform please believe this now it is true that culturally speaking if you are born by a millionaire you are not necessarily the same sociologically speaking with someone who was born somewhere in the village are we together there is an economic advantage if you are born in a nation where the government for instance is more strategic in nation building you already have an environment there are nations today when you are born in you will only need a few visas for the rest of your life because of the advantage of that territory there are others when you are born in even your neighboring country you will need your passport stamps to just cross over because of the show economic disadvantage that comes with those territories are we together in Christ the same Lord is rich unto all so when I stand and I see God doing mighty things with Benny Hinn, when I stand and I see God doing mighty things with the millionaires and billionaires when I stand and I see God doing great things with men of God I am inspired but not inspired to the point where you will now rate yourself as second class. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Listen to me. On every champion and every world changer has found a way of indoctrinating themselves, not arrogantly so, but truthfully so, into an understanding that I stand in a platform through Christ that opens me up to any advantage possible on earth. Do you know what it means to be a child of God? Being a child of God is the most superior most superior honor that any man can get on earth the second honor you can get on earth is to be the son of a monarch or to be a monarch the third will be to be an ambassador or a politician at the highest level there, there are cadres of honor the highest of them is to be called a child of God behold what manner of love the father had bestowed upon us in that we are called us you know we just say it carelessly i'm a child of god donald trump's son 
meets only few assignments in his life are we together now because a major part of it has been solved look at this our lovely children that we just dedicated the truth is that there are some struggles they will not have in their life again till jesus comes remember we are the bridge between the old and the new we have been that sacrifice that have you know labored for people i'm a child of god it's a powerful revelation the monarch of the universe is my father let that revelation touch you when you say god is my father many people are used to abusing the name god for some people god is a bottle of minerals for some people god is an idol with a stone so when you say god is my father it doesn't carry the weight i'm no longer slave to fear i am a child i'm no longer a slave to fear i am a child so you may come from a background that has no advantage it is true that your earthly father may not be able to help you it is true that your heavenly your earthly mother or whatever it is the disadvantage but the consciousness that the monarch of the universe has decided to become my father and i am his child is a revelation that you must have it instantly gives you a sense of superiority not from a negative standpoint are you getting what i'm saying now yes but you move around knowing that the earth is your estate when i travel to any region i expect the same thing to happen regardless of location because i am still within the domain of my father now when you travel to other parts of the world you will do left hand driving others right hand driving when you pass through other places in the world because of the system of government sociologically speaking you are mandated to do certain things but the awareness that the earth is the lord's that means in reality there is no disadvantage because wherever you are located and situated within this territory it is the domain of this monarch called god are we together now very powerful so the bible says that we come boldly this is the first thing i want to establish the promises of god not just the promise of the holy spirit the promises of god that are written in scripture the promises to prosper the promises to heal the promises to lift the promises to bless listen the promise of influence like god spoke to us genesis 17 and verse 6 i will make you exceeding fruitful he said and that kings will come out of your loins nations will come out of you it's not necessarily is it was to abraham but galatians 3 29 says if ye be christ's then are ye abraham's seed and heirs are according to the promise everybody is a spiritual jew in christ and that reality has brought us to a point where there is no disadvantage i pray that god will help you understand what i've said it is not our background no it is not our sociological context it is an understanding of the neutrality the centrality so understand this tonight even as we prepare to live and travel to different regions there is nobody called by god to a life of failure bishop oyedeko said every calling in christ is a high calling everybody say a high calling yes there are no low callings in christ nobody is called to a life of failure mediocrity defeat no we are called to a life of excellence we are called to a life of grace we are called to a life of influence we are called to a life where the bible says that through the church the manifold many-sided wisdom of god will be displayed to principalities and powers if you're with me please say amen, amen. Now, but strangely so, and I want to pay attention now, the Bible seemed to be very open 
about individuals that God decided to carve out a name for. And I want to show you the secrets so that we can tap into this grace and into this possibility. The first is in Genesis chapter 18 from verse 17 to 19. God seems to talk to Abraham in a strange way. And the Bible records that Abraham was called the friend of God. Not many people in life are ever called the friend of God. We're reading from verse 17 down to 19. This will bless you. Look at me. He says, and the Lord said, look up please. Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? 18. Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation and that and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him is a question 19 for i know him mm. that he will command his children and his household after him and they shall keep the way of the lord to do justice and judgment that the lord may bring upon abraham that which he had spoken of him abraham the friend of god it is true that there is a central ground in dealing with God, but it seems as though certain individuals were able to route certain pathways with God that now began to create a bias in God's dealings with them to make God himself now start giving them names. The name son of God, child of God is a generic name for everybody. It defines the centrality of God's love. But that certain individuals went a step further with God and they started earning for themselves titles that represented special attentions, titles that represented certain covenants. So from that neutral standpoint, you can start growing yourself into specific possibilities with God. Are you getting what I'm teaching tonight? So for Abraham, he became the friend of God. And John chapter 15, please. 15 and 16. Very powerful scripture. John 15. He said, you have not chosen me. Look up. But I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit. He's talking about fruitfulness. And that your fruit should remain. And whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. Next verse. He says, these things... No, no. Go to verse 16. Oh dear. Did I miss something? Yes, 15. Let's start from 15. 15 and then 16 and 17. Henceforth, that's what I'm looking for. I call you not servants. Now, it's not an insult to be called a servant of God. A servant of God is not a slave. A servant of God is one who has submitted himself to serve the purposes of God. I know sometimes we say servant, I'm not a servant. If you mean that contrasting sonship, you are right. But you will understand as you grow with God that the hallmark of sonship is servanthood. Are we together? So to be called a servant of God is not an insult. We are bond servants. Paul uses the word bond slaves, but not unto servitude in a negative way. Henceforth, I call you not servants, okay? For the servant, now look at this. This is, oh dear, oh dear. May God open our eyes to see in the name of Jesus. Notice, the proof of servant is ignorance of certain information, knowledge. It says, for a servant knoweth not what the Lord doeth. It says, but I have called you friends. What is the advantage of friendship? For all things that I have heard of my father, I have made known to you. The advantage of friendship with God is the privilege of access to spiritual knowledge. You know you are a friend of God to the degree to which he bends over backwards to open you up to the mysteries of the kingdom, the truths of the kingdom. The Bible calls them the secret things of God. This one is not for everybody. Is God helping us tonight? Abraham, my friend, shall I hide this from him? Shall I hide this from him? A servant does not know. He may obey religiously without knowing. But a friend is privy to information. God is about to do certain things and he says, No, Abraham is my friend. 
This is powerful. So God calls Abraham his friend. So I can know that I am growing just from sonship into friendship by God. By the depth to which his fortitude to share the secrets of the kingdom. And you know that dominion in this kingdom is a function of the secrets of the kingdom that we access. It's called the hidden wisdom of God. By me kings reign and princes decree justice. With me are riches is wealth and honor yea durable riches and righteousness they that love me and seek me early will find me acts chapter 13 we're still building on this acts chapter 13 from verse 21 to 23 another man carves out a title for himself although at a level plain ground we are all children of god or we are all creations of god we now see another man who went out of his way and afterwards peter is speaking now they desired a king and god gave unto them saul the son of kish a man of the tribe of Benjamin by the space of 40 years. Next verse. And when he had removed him, he raised up unto them, read with me, David to be their king. Uh-huh. To whom also he gave testimony. Stop. Who testified? God. God is about to give a testimony that I have found David, the son of Jesse. Help me a man after my own heart what qualifies him to be a man after my own heart his insistence to see that my will is always fulfilled now notice how these people end their titles most times we just know their titles but i'm showing you what they did how they went far when it has to do with the friend of god he's saying you have done something to me that forbids me from hiding things from you i give you access to knowledge as proof of friendship when it now has to do with a man after his heart he's saying i have discerned that this man will die doing my will and i have given him i've given him a title of a man after my own heart god is testifying not a prophet a man who pursues my heart not who pursues the throne don't forget the man is a king and yet god does not talk about his throne he will abandon his throne to seek the heart of god and god says this man is a man after my heart why because of his insistence to see that my will is being done next verse of this man's seed hath God of this man's seed that God according to his promise raised up unto Israel a savior Jesus this is his reward for being a man after God's heart God insisted that your seed must participate in the lineage that will bring David was not the only man after the order of you know God and all of that but he is he is called the seed of David thou son of David, not thou son of Rahab, not thou son of Boaz, not thou son of Naomi. They all played their roles, but out of those people, God selected one man to become, to personify his passion towards a man. Are you learning something tonight? A man after my heart, a friend of God this is a very powerful revelation now let me share with you something very very powerful um and, and and this is where i think and i believe that many believers are not properly mentored and as we go on break it's important to remind and re-emphasize this that in the dealings of God, man will always have a role to play in actualizing prophecy. Please listen carefully. That the systems of God work twofold. One, the dimensions that are finished from God's standpoint. And then number two, through the experience of alignment and obedience, we make manifest that which has been finished in our lives. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 12. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 12. It says, Wherefore, Paul is admonishing the church in Philippi. Wherefore, 
my beloved as ye have always obeyed not as in my presence only but now much more in my absence hear what he says walk out your own not your neighbor not your child not your wife not your husband walk out your own salvation and give it a level of diligence with fear and trembling walk out your own prosperity walk out your own intimacy with the holy spirit walk out your own ensure that you press into God so much that he's forced to find a name for you he calls Abraham a friend of God he calls Jacob the one he names it after a generation of intimacy and he's saying listen you have a responsibility to press until until you give him no rest the Bible says until he establishes Jerusalem there is a way you can wear God out if I can use that word through your passion and your intimacy intimacy he will brand his relationship with you and give it a name that defines his unique attention towards you work out your own salvation you will read about prosperity and never enter into it you may read about divine health and never enter into it now listen because this is a serious problem with africa the awareness of things like the finished work of christ which is true has when not properly balanced has provided a platform for a lot of irresponsibilities in believers and the ability to sustain the fortitude to press as an act of faith it's not there so we have people who just sit down and want everybody pray for me be wealthy for me be prosperous for me and that fortitude that participatory effort is not there are we together now so many people want to know the Holy Spirit and they think the key to knowing the Holy Spirit is to receive an impartation from a man who knows the Holy Spirit. What you are going to receive from that impartation is a ladder, a ladder that you will climb. Hello? A ladder that you what? Climb. You will climb it through your prayer. You will climb it through your relationship. You will climb it through the sacrifice of the instructions God will give you. That is not for everybody, it's for only you. You are about to eat and God says, turn the plate upside down. You are fasting for one week. He said, God, is it for everybody? He said, no, it's for only you. He said, God, why me? I mean, scripture. He says, I thought you want a name. A name that defines the extent of my intimacy with you. This is the pathway that leads to such a possibility. Now, there are rewards when you contend that much. Because you will, I mean, in physically now, we have what we call regular treatment of guests, whether in hotels, airports, whatever. We have what is called priority treatment. Now, the Nigerian government does not allow favoritism. But the various sacrifices of people have forced to have a lounge, a business lounge, a general place where people sit down. All those things are not favoritism. They are a way of rewarding the contribution of those people to nation building. So in as much as there is a level playing ground, there is something you and God can do that makes it unfair fair for God to generalize his dealings with you that from that time is a covenant you create that makes it impossible for God to deal with you the way he deals with everyone this is true it's a very powerful mystery that I show you work out your own salvation Thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. It is he that gives you the power to get well. A lot of believers start jumping. In the name of Jesus, I will never be poor. You are getting poor. You are seeing it. God is, your poverty is a report card. God is telling you, you are missing something. I will never be poor. I'm not being sarcastic. And you find out that a lot of people, and then here and there, we just browse through the laws. Okay, what and what should I know? Okay, tithing, giving, I should do business, I should do this. And then you just do one or two things and find out that nothing changes. And at a point, you just say, Kai, this Nigeria yourself man must work and you know all of this we find obvious excuses and then things never change but there are people who will will you will see them burn the candle in the days of my youth when the secrets of the Lord was upon my tabernacle when his light shined upon my head there is a light that shines upon your head there is the one that shines upon your feet the one that shines upon your head gives you illumination 
it says there is a spirit in man if you only have the light that shines on your feet you will keep walking but let me tell you the truth you will need the one that grants you access to knowledge are, are you getting what i'm teaching you now yes hmm. work out your own salvation any ministry that grows is worked at you know a lot of people sometimes respectfully people see me and say wow apostle god is doing mighty things in your life and i say yes he is and i, I really thank him and they, ah you are anointed though and you know sometimes i'm tempted to say I, I hear you are carrying the anointing of the generals and i'm tempted to say are they my relatives how did that happen you see this, this is the question we need to ask God has favored you God has favored koinonia my brothers and my sisters behind everything that works is somebody walking it walking it with diligence walking it with passion walking it with zest behind every business that works it is favor every house is built by some man but God is still the builder it's a mystery this issue of being a worker this language walk believers don't like it the men the moment you mention walk people don't ah, why must i walk oh dear genesis chapter 2 after god creates man and woman he now comes to take clay god the creator who speaks and creates used his hand not his mouth alone when you read chapter 1 alone you are deceived because that's where he spoke and created it in the realm of the spirit you must go to chapter 2 and see god the walker not just god the speaker it takes more than speaking to build a destiny your hands must be soiled you will put your hands down and make it happen there are people around just looking for impartation looking for cheap prophecy and there is a place for those things but it is only activated whilst you walk whilst you walk hallelujah many people are going to remain poor it's not it's not a negative prophecy and my heart pains me while i say this many people are going to remain mediocre in their life many people may never sustain the level of influence and grace that it takes to birth the purposes of god generationally and it is not necessarily because god decided to use others it is your individual commitment elisha was never supposed to be a prophet elisha was a farmer but he followed Elijah and said I don't care what you are going to do with me oh I must carry some they were already sons of the prophet the next prophet should come out of them but someone said I need I, I, I can't die farming I started farming but I will follow you until something comes upon my life we define our realities by the unashamedness to pursue the keys of the kingdom until something comes from heaven to your life I will never be the same. I've touched your grace. My life will change. I will never be the same. I've touched your grace. My life will change. I will never be the same. I've touched your grace. My life. I, 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 finances with fear and trembling man of god sit down work out your ministry work out your sermons don't just wait for an impartation that will teach you verses open your bible mark them write them down when others are sleeping wake up there is the labor dimension of greatness no impartation will replace it you don't sit down and casually fast yourself the way you like into uncommon anointings you are joking you pray once in a while when you want one hour per year two hours per year no buy the books read your way to excellence 
Use your diligence to create a space for yourself in destiny. My life will change. Eh? My life must change. My life will change. Eh? My life will change. I will never be the same. I've touched his grace. My life must change. I will never be the same. My life will change. My life will change. My life must change. My life will change. Second Peter chapter 2. We read from verse 4 down to 10. The verse of emphasis is verse 10. Please listen, my brothers and my sisters. This is a message to the body of Christ. We must be careful. We are missing a very major key. The dimension of spiritual diligence. It cannot be bought. There are certain wells you must dig by yourself. Africa likes prophecy. We like impartation. We like to receive. But there are wells that must be dug. There are, there are fountains that must be broken. It's a sacrifice. The price is death. Are we together? Go to verse 8. Go to verse 8. Second Peter 1. For if these things be in you. Look at this now. And abound. They make that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. 9. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Ten. Wherefore the rather, he says, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and your election sure. It is true you are called, but prove it. It is true you are called, but give the level of diligence that makes your calling and your election sure it is true you are a prophet but prove it it is true you are an apostle but prove it it is true that god has raised you to be a voice but obtain grace to prove it give diligence 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 in prayer diligence in the study of the word diligence in the sacrifice of compliance listen let me tell you real success is not at a platter of gold at any level whether it is spiritual success whether it is financial success whether it is grace and influence it is a sacrifice of continual press as your insistence is what makes life open the gate for you is god speaking to us this is where men are separated from boys this is where what provides the disparity in ministry this is what provides the disparity in business this is what provides the disparity in the advantages that we command in our lives i've had the privilege and the opportunity to talk with a few very great people and i am amazed at the silent sacrifices of these things these people when you see a wealthy man all you see is the affluence and you see the money until you find out the sacrifices that go on when you see a man of god you may just see the miracles and the signs and the wonders until you see the sacrifices that go on when you see a great person even politicians it's amazing that those people don't sleep two o'clock three a.m they are organizing meetings there are men of god who organize vigils they sleep by five six and by eight they are awake to attend to programs whoever told you that this thing just comes easy is a sacrifice it says to be diligent someone will have to obtain that grace today wishing and hoping and believing that just laying on of hands and all of that people are lucky no there are many platforms of advantage 
like prophetic connections, like all of these kinds of things, but none of them will replace the track record of sustained diligence. Hallelujah. Diligence. This is what I've learned in my life. As I have studied different people in ministry and then other platforms of life, I have tried to look for what is the the, the, the impediment, what is the one factor that seems to cancel out every effort because people do things, but I found out that most people are not diligent. Most people are hopeful. Most people are prayerful. Most people are very futuristic, but the ability to stamp your feet and say, I will walk this thing in the name of Jesus until it works. Ministry must work doors must open by the price of diligence the labor dimension jesus said my father walked hitherto i walk my father walks and i walk to the point that even seated at the right hand of the father he's still engaged making intercession for the saints many african nations respectfully speaking we have missed on the price of diligence, spiritual diligence, socioeconomic diligence, the diligence of mentorship, the diligence of the sacrifice of breaking these grounds until the fountains open. Can I be honest with you and submit to you? Next year will come and go. Year after next will come and go. Another year will come and go. A decade will come and go. Your lifetime will come and go until you draw yourself and say, look, I am ready to walk this thing. Thank God for prophetic words. They are not a lie. But they only work for those who walk. Prophetic word does not work for those who hear. It works for those who walk. Diligent. Is God speaking to us tonight? Now, let me share with you one key to add to your diligence or so, and then we'll just rush to pray. I have found out. Now, I don't claim to have known God for too long, but I have enjoyed a little bit of his presence. And let me tell you something I found out with God. The single... Look up. The single most important factor that governs the dealing of God with a man is the state of your heart. The purity and the truthfulness of the state of your heart is the master key to walking with God. Write it down. There are many systems that continue to build men in the kingdom. But listen to me, my brothers and my sisters. There is nothing of God and of worth that will ever happen to a man, a people, a nation whose hearts are not pure towards God and whose hearts are not true towards God. The motivation and the motif of your heart vetoes your prayer life vetoes your fasting vetoes your obedience no matter what you do with god you are not ready to start with god until he is able to x-ray your heart the purity and the sincerity of your heart is the foundational platform of doing business with god you have to understand this there are many believers that ignore this and we do a lot of other things we do business we fast we pray we do ministry but i have discovered in my work with god and from scripture that god is obsessed with knowing the truthfulness of the state of the heart of a man and i've preached many messages along this line please get them and listen to them see the great in this kingdom are not necessarily the most diligent the great in this kingdom are not necessarily as it were the closest people with god but there is something i know about god the purity of a man's heart is a force that magnetizes all of god to you 
the state of your heart why do you want to prosper why do you want anointing why do you want to be a president why do you want to be a governor why do you want to be a man of god why do you want to be a business mogul do you know for many believers this is where the real corruption lies that the motive and the motivation intrinsically is not right i know several men of god who will do anything within scripture to get power they have the stamina to fast for as long they have the stamina to pray but the truth is that intrinsically god has not found a space for himself in their motif if there is one secret about my life i tell you this and i say it before god and i say it before you if there is one secret it is that if i prefer that i go to be with the lord if god cannot find a space for himself in my heart and in my motif it's not just about anointing listen it's not just about prosperity and influence you know many times when i travel and people are receiving me and the honor the whole paraphernalia of honor and everything and i see people admiring and i just nod my head i say oh dear oh dear may god have mercy and grant us grace to reorient our understanding because this is some of these flamboyant things when we see we are we are caught up and we go and say no me too i must be rich i must be blessed and we start fasting already your motif has come everything and I if I be lifted up from the earth I will draw all men I will draw all men I want to marry why I want children why I want increase in ministry why listen it is not a difficult thing for God to step in and help men it is within God's power to lift men riches and honor come from him the influence and the power and the grace comes from him the problem is the state of our hearts the greatest prayer therefore is not even intercession for souls the greatest prayer is not binding witches and wizards the greatest prayer is not deliverance from enemies the greatest prayer is the prayer that turns your heart into a throne the throne where he can be seated the prayer that can turn your heart into a throne is a prayer god cannot ignore please koinonia listen to me these are my final words to us as we prepare to wrap up the year there are people who God loves them as savior to all but doing the business of destiny it has not started until that death happens so sometimes when people come and say apostle I want an impartation I want grace with all it's a privilege to be able to do the things that we do for the kingdom but I know that I'm wasting my time I've read books on wealth and prosperity I've read books on church growth I've read books on influence territorial dominion at a point in time I had to appreciate the books but I closed them I said Lord there must be a secret and that's when he told me that the price for all of me is all of you the price for all of me is not all of your brain the price for all of me is not all of your singing the price for all of me is not all of your worship. The price for all of me is all of you. Is God speaking to us? All of you. All of you. All of you. Now, let me tell you this. It is not unusual for a generation to not believe you. So don't think it is strange. My loved ones don't believe me. You are not the first. It is all right. A generation does not believe me. Nothing is believable till the results speak. Please understand this. But that price of death continues to be. And you see, the thing with death is you don't die once. It's Jesus that died once. The saints die every day. Hello? Jesus died once and for all because of the character of what he was doing. The atonement. You are not dying to atone. You are dying to yield. You are dying to align. The death is part 24 hours. 
the moment today is gone you start the death of tomorrow the moment tomorrow is gone you start the death for every dimension of death there is a corresponding glory the day you are tired god will not force you but he will show you that don't then ask for this dimension of glory when you are not willing to continue Yeshua Hamashiach Komi na na kane Yeshua Hamashiach Komi na na kane Komi na na kane ya Yesu Yeshua Hamashiach. One more time. Komina na kane. Ya Yesu. Komina na kane. Komina na kane. Komina na kane. Yeshua Hamashiach. Let God find a dead vessel and you see the possibilities that can come out. Show me a man who has vowed to continue to die. I show you a glory that excels. Show me a people that continue to die. Our generation does not like the language of death because every time we talk of death, it spells inconvenience, it spells discomfort, it spells going out of it. Means that sometimes God will strip you of everything you. It's a price for the glory. No matter how much impartation, it's a price for the glory. You are not just going to lay hands on the sick and say in Jesus' name, stand up, I'm a member of Koinonia. You are right. But let me tell you, when it comes to the depth of the dealings of God generationally, you will need to die generationally. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Please listen very carefully. There are people that God will give you instructions. Empty your account. There are people God will tell you 80% of all your wealth for the next two years. Keep giving it. You say, Lord, why? He said, because you said you want to be a kingdom financier. God, I said, I, I thought I should have. He says, I want to give you a revelation of there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. You, are, you know it as a memory verse, but I'm leading you through a pathway that makes it an experience for you. Lord, I want you to anoint me. Grant me the grace that speaks across territories. And he says, you really want that? Yes, God, let's go. And you start the journey. And for starters, he says, give everything you have in your life. He said, God, I didn't hear you well. Give everything you have. Your reputation, your wealth, your everything, your clothes, your honor, give it away. That is the price. It's what he told the rich man. He said, go and sell everything you have. Follow me. The man said, no, 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 Jesus, this one is so much authentic spiritual power does not just come by impartation alone it comes by death it comes by death lord i'm trusting god for the grace for illumination revelation but your mind is full of many things you must die to give it space and when there is space then the oil can come and the seeing eye can be given to you please listen to what i'm telling you remember my message the same Lord is rich unto all. But by certain sacrifices, men have ascended this ladder and they have given, they have branded their dealings with God so that he has been forced through their sacrifices to no longer deal with them as he deals with men. This is the hand of God and this is the way he walks. Scattered across the body of Christ, are different individuals different territories who have ascended different dimensions of ladders in the spirit and God has defined certain possibilities to them there are churches and ministries when you enter there you must prosper even before you finish learning all the laws at least you will prosper to a point where you will be surprised you will know that I have no part in this because you are now a partaker of a covenant God has vowed a vow by the sacrifices of certain people Please listen to me, brothers and sisters. When you walk with God at a general level, 
you will go to heaven but you will not do much these are not even the people satan is looking for satan will come and pass you you will call him you will still leave you he's looking for people there are people he's looking for desperately where are these ones that want to die where are these ones whose life is no longer their own where are these people who want to experience the anointing in another dimension where are these ones who want the power and the grace of god where are these ones who want the influence of nations there is nothing that can be done about a man who has chosen to die the last enemy to be destroyed is death and when a man has chosen to die it's over Boko Haram are a threat because of their willingness to die not to leave when you want to leave you are in trouble you are only free when you are ready to die Kane. <laughs> Yeshua Hamashiach Yeshua Hamashiach I have been crucified with Christ nevertheless I live is a mystery and the life that I live in the flesh I live by the fate of the Son of God that whatever it will cost me to die I will die not for the sake of ministry not for the sake of money not for the sake of titles that prayer to search my heart Try my thought. It's a powerful prayer. It's a prayer you must pray for the rest of your life in this side of God's kingdom. The heart that cries for all of God, not more of God. All of God, not more of God. All of God. He will, he will come more and more. But the goal is for all of him to be transfused into you. The secret to ministry is not invitations. The secret to ministry is not a crowd. It's not a church. It's not eloquence and oratory. The secret to ministry is not even the loyalty of men to serve you. The secret is death. Genuine, continual death. I died yesterday. You are joking. You die daily. I died last week. No, sir. You die daily. You are dying today. You will die next week. A time will come when you truly will not have any life on your own. These are the ones that step their feet upon the soil of nations. And like the waters, it will pass hither and thither. And you are wondering, are these men gods? They are men. But death translated them into another dimension. Please hear me, my brothers and my sisters. More than Bible study, more than mentorship, more than fasting, more than prayer, more than training your skills, the real secret is to die. After 30 years as Christ tarries, I will still be preaching this thing I'm saying. If you don't die, you cannot live. The way to live is to die. To die to yourself. To die to your ego. To die to your desires. It's a journey. A journey that until the day you see his face, you don't stop. I die daily. 
it is the price for carrying the anointing it is the price for carrying grace you can die to a point where it does not make any difference whether god keeps his wealth in heaven or he keeps it in your account you have so died is the same thing whether the money is in your account or is in heaven in god's mind is the same because any day he makes a demand it will go a time will come where whether the anointing is in heaven or the anointing is on your life is the same because god has guaranteed that you will die seeing to it that his purposes be established this that i share with you is the price when this is settled then that's when every other thing makes sense your prayer life your fasting even your obedience to scripture believe me when i tell you all that is nonsense when you have not died is the reason why we will keep fasting we will keep praying we will keep quoting scripture you see someone's car you go and lie down on it and say oh god please open my door and you are right it should bless you but it will not bless you because you are speaking from a platform of a decadence of heart yes you are. listen we give we give breaks in the ministry not just to allow us rest it's been a busy year for everyone but the goal is not just to rest and catch up we are giving you one month so that it will help you die well die enough to carry the glory of 2020 die enough to carry the power of 2020 die enough to carry the voice and the mantle of 2020 that lord i am dead but not dead enough to carry the next glory dead but not dead enough to carry the mantle the power dead but not dead enough to be trusted with kingdom influence at that point the one week now you are not going to go to god as a worker you are not going to god as apostle joshua selman you are not going to god as a leader you are going to God as one who is desirous of his use. And now you can have the time to lock yourself. You can have the time to stay with God and stay till you die. While your flesh cries, you say, God, don't pity it. Forget about the tears of my flesh. Keep the death going. Just keep the death going. The death of your ego. Say, forget about my ego. Keep the death going. Ah, my money. Forget about the money. Keep the death going show me that man and i show you a man to fear in this life a man that has mastered death i die daily paul said so he got to a point where he could say for me oh i don't know whether it is to go or to stay i have conquered the interface of these limitations but for your sake i will stay let me tell you my brothers and sisters you've heard me say it again there are virgin dimensions in the spirit compared to where god is taking us we are only starting and we must trust god for grace to not be complacent the secret is to turn to god and sit down and die the applauds of men can deceive men can clap you and stop you from entering tomorrow this one thing I do, the Bible says, forgetting the things that are behind. You must train yourself to forget. Both success and failure can do the same thing. It can kill you. So you lay it aside and say, Lord, what is the price for the next level? And he says, death. And he says, come. Like a doctor about to perform a surgery on a patient, let it go. Let the ministration of that death continue. And you are staying with God. He will tell you for the next three days let no food enter your mouth there is a surgery spiritually and even the slightest meal can interrupt it and he said lord ordinarily i will want to eat but for the joy that is before me let me endure the cross and even despise the shame and in the midst of that pain suddenly you will meet an anointing you will meet a grace and god will tell you this anointing is what i'm releasing on earth for the next 15 years that means whoever does not have this type of anointing cannot be featured in my program and now that you have died enough here you go pick it up and you pick it and like like the pages of a book another dimension of you is open and whilst you think you have exhausted you will see another dimension they go from strength to strength this is my message 
not just to go and celebrate Christmas and up and down not just to go gisting and wasting our time listen times with God are times of death now is not the time to go and be clapping for yourself in the secret place it's foolishness great men are great because they forget their crowns great men are great because they forget their trophies great men are great because they forget their achievements create an immunity in your room that does not hear let you hear the the clappings of men while they are clapping you are dying the clap increases you are still dying and the flesh tells you have you not attained enough and the Spirit of God says you lie not for the mantle of a nation keep dying keep dying you will see the effulgence of the power of God in your life and men will look at you and say are you a human being or you are a spirit when you go back God will say can we continue you are back from the meeting you some of you will go home and God will give you instructions organize crusades organize little meetings and while you are doing all of those people will look at you and say at ah, this koinonia and while they are talking you want to come back to life and the spirit to say no not at this point keep dying the door to life is death the door to the throne is the cross the door to the cross then the grave you must die it is the one key I have learned in my life fear a man who dies don't fear a man who died now I beseech ye brethren by the mercies of God that ye offer your bodies a living sacrifice unto God which is your reasonable act of worship there are times that God does not want songs no there are times that God does not want prayer there are times God does not even want dancing around there are times God does not want reading any Bible there are times God just wants the sacrifice of death it will rise as an incense past the second heavens where demons are demons don't need your death they cannot do anything with your death it will pass them they can't cast it they can't kill it it passes straight to the throne and is received before the master and through that death the blood that comes from your death becomes your agreement the signature you sign with God for the next five years Lord I am still available Lord don't replace me with a stone Lord I am still there you have options but incorporate me in your program are you ready to pray number one Lord make me blind to anything that can make me alive in myself whether it's pride whether it is money whether it is the flesh deaden my eyes deaden my ears deaden my senses to the impulses that can distract my process of death lift your voice and pray Lift your voice and pray. Pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. Not Nigeria. Not your family. Not ministry. Pray for yourself. Not your neighbor. Not your brother. Not your sister. Pray for yourself. Lord, let me die the death that brings glory. Let me die the death that brings power. Deaden my eyes, deaden my ears to the impulse. 
houses of destruction deaden my eyes deaden my ears to the uploads of men deaden my eyes deaden my ears to the flattery of men the deception of success bring me to a point where i am focused in death dying daily dying hourly I give you a key one more time for those who did not hold it this year you should hold it before you go home that everything only makes sense when death is in place that everything only makes sense when the flesh dies that everything only makes sense die daily die daily die on monday die on tuesday die on wednesday die on thursday die on friday die on saturday die on tuesday it is not physical death it is death to the flesh stay on the journey obtain grace and stamina the stamina to continue the stamina to press until you press to strange dimensions of anointings strange dimensions of graces die until God swears a vow upon your life die until the character of the spirit is continually formed in you die until you are dead that all of you is replaced by all of him hallelujah hallelujah we are going to pray a very serious prayer oh god purge my motives listen purge my motivation why do i do the things that i do why do i preach why do i want money why do i want a wife why do i want a husband why do i want children why do i want influence why do i want my voice to be heard generationally what is the intrinsic motivation we are about to pray and let the light of god the double-edged sword penetrate dividing the soul and spirit and let it discern the thoughts and the intents of your heart don't be ashamed what you find there don't be embarrassed by it that's what his presence is for that's what the sword is for but lift your voice purge my motif purge my motivation the psalmist said search my heart try my thoughts and see if there's any evil way in me then he says lead me to the way everlasting koinonia pray in this final service Shila baruto sodo bash, eketa baruto soto pradish, randa baranta skabaru shaletos. Why do I want influence? Why do I want prosperity? Why do I want a voice? Why do I want the anointing? Why do I want the prophetic? Why do I want the healing grace? Why do I want access to the heart of a generation? Pray and cry before God. My pride pray break my ego pray break my reputation bring me to a point of nothingness where all that is in my heart is a desire to see you glorified a desire to see your purpose is established is someone praying 
breaks and we are done. But pray. Shila paruto so de bash. Lekata parakata barato so de kete. Embre koto shelletariata. The purity. The purity of my motivation. The purity of my motif. The purity of my desire. Lift your voice and pray. is a process that makes you become a friend of God. This is a process that makes you become an icon for a generation. Forget about fame. Forget about influence. Forget about prosperity and die. Purify my motives. Purify my motivation. If you find any motivation that is not the revelation of the Christ, if you find any motivation that is not the enthroning of your purposes, Lord, I allow you to kill it. Pray that prayer. Let it die and die again and again. Listen, hallelujah. We're rounding up, but listen, let me tell you this. Happy is a man. See, you see, Ba, outside of this journey, we are not worth much. We are very small. It is the excellency of this journey that makes you heavy. That's where the word glory comes from. Kabod, doxa, the weightiness of God upon a man. The mighty God upon a man doing wonders. The treasure that comes from heaven to turn a man around so that your life becomes an effulgence. Pages of wonders. Ever increasing wonders. We're going to pray the last point and we're done. Father, the next dimension of my life and my destiny, whatever price it would take to step into it, I obtain grace. The Bible says we should obtain grace. This grace is obtained. It is not assumed. It is obtained. Lift your voice and begin to pray. The next dimension. The next dimension of my prosperity. What is the price, oh God? The next dimension of ministry, what is the prize? The next dimension of influence. You are praying now, preparing for 2020. Is someone praying? Thank God for the 2019. Thank God for that which was done. But Lord, I set my face like a fling. Is someone praying tonight? What is the price for the anointing of 2020? What is the price for the influence of 2020? What is the price for the impact of 2020? What is the price for the speed of 2020? What is the price for the relevance of 2020? What will it take to be featured in your program. No assumptions. No assumptions. I obtain grace. I obtain grace. I obtain grace to be featured in your program. Come 2020. I obtain grace to remain relevant in the scheme of things. Come 2020. I remain. I obtain grace to remain your friend. To remain a man after your heart, grace to remain the voice. Please pray for yourself, pray for your family, pray for your church, pray for your ministry, pray for your business. Lord, what will it take to remain? What will it take to increase? What will it take to advance? What will it take?
Hallelujah. Let me give us one more prayer point. The Lord is just ministering one more prayer point. We are going to pray. Holy Spirit. You see, the revelation of the Holy Spirit is a mighty secret. Many people know his power, but they do not know his presence. Many people know how to use the anointing that comes from the Holy Ghost to prophesy, to pray for the sick. But the intimacy, Paul said the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the koinonia, the fellowship, the participation, the sharing together. Please, you have to use this break to know the Holy Spirit. Thank God for ministers who continue to pray. And based on the assignment he has given in life and in death, will continue to be faithful to it. But you must trust God for intimacy. Holy Spirit, who are you? You are not just a wind. Benny Hinn said you are his friend. Catherine Kuhlman said you are her friend. I can't lie that you are my friend. Reveal yourself to me. Not for the sake of ministry. Not for the sake of prophecy. 99% of our pursuit for the Holy Spirit is to get the gifts that come from him so that we will increase our sphere and then use it to be relevant. Nonsense. You must shelve those things and say, Holy Spirit, show me who you are. That Shekinah, that presence, that intimacy. Jesus walked with you. You turned him into a sign and a wonder spirit of the living god and for some of us we have to pray and say holy spirit from where i left off let continue the journey because it was not like this from where i left off let's continue the journey pick my hands again turn me into a sign and a wonder but much more than that turn me into a friend we are going to pray holy spirit manifest yourself reveal yourself to me lift your voice and pray Reveal yourself in the quietness of the night. Haven't purged my motif. Haven't purged my motivation. Help me seek you for who you are. Help me know you for who you are. Not for what you can do to my life. Not what you can bring to my table. Let my life never remain the same. We're wrapping up. Aside from those who are under the anointing and those who are kneeling down, if you can hold someone's hand, if there's somebody near you to hold a hand, let's just hold hands as a family of faith, connecting with those all around the world. We will never be the same. We've touched your grace. Our lives will change. We can never be the same. Not with your grace. Our lives must change. Our lives will change. Our lives will change. Our hearts must change. Father, I stand in the presence of your people. And everyone who is connected to this grace and connected to this ministry all over this nation all over the continent of africa and all over the world we stand as a family in this last service and whilst thanking you for everything you have done in 2019 we decree and declare do not withhold administering the death that produces glory in us in the name of jesus Lord, I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice and the millions connecting from different nations. Spirit of the living God, reveal yourself to us. Beyond religion, 
reveal yourself to us in the name of Jesus father I stand before your people and as a family of faith we cry the price for the relevance of 2020 the price for the revelations of 2020 the price for the signs the wonders the influence the price to end your trust for 2020 through the ministration of death we pray in the name of jesus may that price be fully paid in our lives i pray tonight and forever search our hearts oh god purify our motives and continue to overturn and overturn until everything you find in our hearts is christ christ enthroned christ glorified christ exalted christ revealed in the name of jesus christ father i decree and declare right now over everyone connected to this grace that in the name of jesus let this break be a break that is worth the while let it be full of moments of encounter and intimacy let it be full of moments of plannings and revelations may this break be the bridge between our now and our tomorrow in the name of jesus for all of you who will be traveling in the name of jesus i decree and declare whether by road whether by sea whether by air i speak over you by the god of heaven may your journeys be blessed may your going out and your coming in remain blessed in the name of jesus i send you from this place tonight like the foxes of samson that you will go in the spirit and the power of elohim may you go and wreak havoc to the kingdom of darkness may you go and bring life be dispensers of life in your homes return back to your localities as signs and wonders and for as many of you who god will be giving instructions to do many things for the kingdom within the time of the break the grace to be effective let it be released everybody who will be on retreat everybody should be and everybody who will be on retreat i pray for you let there be an open heavens accurate delivery of the precepts for the next level of your life in the name of jesus i decree and declare every challenge in your life now and every challenge in your family and every challenge in your locality by the power that raised christ from the dead i declare that it leaves you now and forever anyone under the sound of my voice that the spirit of death is roaming around your life and around your family i stand by the god of heaven and i curse it now in jesus name i speak life to your destiny i speak life to your family i speak life to your body in the name of jesus christ I declare that nobody connected to this ministry will be a victim of kidnappers in the name of Jesus Christ and I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit may my God keep you from trouble he will only take you to the place of honor in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus finally before we round up let me pray over our finances a lot has happened in the nation and it is only responsible that i speak over our finances especially during the yuletide season 
there are families that sadly can barely even afford something to eat it's not enough to be waiting for welfare for god to use somebody god can open the heavens there is an advantage that the prophetic provides even at times like this every time there was famine and financial squallow it was the prophetic that came to breach and i want to speak over our finances it matters that there are resources in our hands especially within this time there are some of us um every one of our family members will be depending on us while we are depending on god and probably others so i need to speak into your life i pray for you in the name of jesus <clears throat> between now and next week by the god of heaven let there be a manifestation of strange favor in the name of jesus let very strange resources at a corporate level and as an individual level may these resources follow you every financial need that will arise the grace to solve it i release it upon you in the name of jesus christ and finally i pray for you that the love of god the bond of perfectness i've taught you that the hallmark of transformation is love not knowledge i pray for you from the depth of my heart the love of god that seals your character the love of god that seals all that you are i impart it upon you now in the name of jesus christ the bible says by this shall all men know that we are your disciples when we have love one for another may the baptism a fresh dimension of love let it come upon you in the name of jesus be extensions of that love to your loved ones be extensions of that love to your locality whatever it would take for you to show that love may the grace be released upon you in the name of jesus christ amen and amen this is our prayer just turn it into a prayer let your eyes be fixed on Jesus while you pray no distraction take away your eyes from your neighbor just fix your eyes on Jesus while you speak truthfully to him this is why I am here to draw to drink Fix your eyes on Jesus. We cast our crowns before the highest royalty. I am undone. Before for your glorious majesty I cast my crown before the highest royalty I am undone before your glorious majesty one more time 
I cast my crown before the highest royalty. I am undone before your glorious majesty. You're the King of kings and Lord of lords. You are the Of Lord, your glorious majesty, you're the King of kings and Lord. Of Lord, you are the King of kings. You're the King of kings and Lord. Of Lord, your glorious majesty.
cast my crown before the highest royalty. I am undone before. Spirit of the living God tonight, we have come. We came believing. We came trusting. We came expectant. Believing that you are able to lift us. You are able to open our eyes. You are able to show us your ways. I pray, oh God, that tonight our hearts will be greatly edified. I pray that no one who has come here tonight will leave disappointed. We decree and declare that there is the hearing of faith and even the working of miracles. We vow tonight as always that you will take the glory and that you alone will be lifted in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Please be seated. Please be seated. It's good to have everyone again. I trust that tonight we will have some time to pray we didn't do justice to our prayer last week amen um we're to take come up here part two but i'm suspending that tonight we can take that next week the lord put something in my heart that i think is very very powerful that we must listen to and then we pray amen Every time God sends his word, his word comes with power, his word comes with healing, deliverance, and hope. Praise the Lord. This afternoon, the Lord showed me something that it's important we discuss and then we pray about. Every once and again, um, our assignment is not only to prepare sermons but to be discerning enough to see what God is saying and to understand what he is doing per time the Bible talks about the sons of Issachar they had understanding of the times and they knew what Israel ought to do praise the Lord while I was just putting together this that the Lord uh, would have me share tonight um, I got a text message that for me was again a confirmation and um, there's a lot going on in our world and in our society that is important we are alive to it we understand it and then we pray there is a growing trend of frustration please listen very carefully of depression and exhaustion these three words the holy spirit used speaking to me frustration depression and exhaustion to be exhausted and the lord told me that these are spirits that have been sent to the body even at such a time as this to shortchange many people from stepping into the fullness of God's word and God's purposes in their lives even for this season and so my my exhortation tonight as we pray 
is going to deal with two categories of people. Please listen. Number one, those who are severely under attack in their lives in this season. If you belong to this category, I have a word for you tonight. That there are people, there are families, there are individuals who it looks like they are in very, very trying seasons of their lives where all hell has broken loose over that individual over that family and it's important for you to be guided on the steps to take even to victory number two those who um are not necessarily attacked but they are going through phases in their lives that are nothing unusual as far as greatness and destiny is concerned it's important that we are used by God to help you interpret the happenings in your life so that you are not like them who are void of understanding. It is important that believers mature into understanding times, seasons, and the dealings of the spirit that comes with all of those times. Are we together now? So we're going to deal with these two categories of people. Can you lift your voice in one minute again and ask the Lord for understanding? Father, grant me understanding grant me understanding grant me understanding hallelujah amen please pay attention those following online pay attention if you know someone who belongs to these categories even if not you please pay attention for their sake hallelujah there are not many things that can discourage a christian please listen carefully um, but the few things that can discourage a christian when they are there and they remain the effect of their presence can be disastrous. I have identified two major um, issues, if I would say, that discourage Christians. Number one is on answered prayer. There's almost nothing more frustrating to a believer who genuinely loves God as a tragedy of unanswered prayer that people lift up their voice to heaven believing that God is alive releasing all their faith as much as they know and then not getting the answer that should be number two is an unfruitful Christian life an unfruitful Christian life that means that when your life with time is void of certain evidences that should be testaments of your service, your work to, for God. It's very, very frustrating when a believer gets born again and opens up his heart, serving the Lord, giving his best, and then with time cannot see um, the evidences. There are evidences, testaments that help us and help believers around us to appreciate the hand of God upon our life. So unanswered prayers and then an unfruitful Christian life. Now write this down, please. There is a goal. Let me start with those who are severely being attacked by the gate of hell. There is a goal. There is an object behind every attack of Satan. Listen carefully. That every time hell launches an attack on an individual on a ministry, on a family, on a couple, there is something behind the thinking of the devil and his cohorts. And the Bible did not leave us in the dark as to what Satan is really looking for. And if you do not understand, then you will continually be defeated by all of the, the attacks of Satan. The first goal behind every attack the first thing the devil seeks to achieve is to destroy your confidence in God 
and the integrity of his word please never forget this that every time the devil attempts to attack a believer he's attempting to attack your confidence in god and the integrity of his word what satan is really attacking is the integrity of god's word what satan is attacking is your confidence in god the bible says to cast not away your confidence why because it has a great recompense of reward are we together your confidence in god i don't know if i've shared it here but i remember i was in Joss for a meeting when i met a gentleman who was talking to me about his dad and he told me his dad was once a reverend in one of these great denominations around and having been frustrated repeatedly in the field the man not only turned away from god he made up his mind that he was going to move to another faith entirely he was so frustrated no school fees for his children no meaning for his life nothing seemed to work and he said look i've served this god i've preached about this god but i'm going to have to stop lying to myself it does not work you will think that you may never get to a point where you can consider this let me tell you something life has a way of pushing a man a family an individual to a point where you will doubt the reality of god was it not john the baptist under pressure who said go and ask him if he's the messiah or should we expect another for john to be thinking of another as the person who ordained jesus he should tell you what situations and circumstances can do are we together so your confidence in god and the integrity of his word number two the goal of every attack is to introduce the spirit of fear this subject of fear is very 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 important you will be amazed at how many believers have been utterly destroyed because they became the victims of fear the bible says the righteous are as bold as a lion there is a reason why he says that fear is terrible it's a destructive spirit every other spirit stands in the line waiting for fear to open the door no other spirit can open any door that fear does not open failure waits for fear to open the door death waits for fear to open the door discouragement waits for fear all the spirits line up with the potentials of the havoc they can wreck but then they wait for fear a man who conquers fear has conquered many spirits automatically the bible says and to deliver them who through fear the fear of death now have all their lifetime been subject to bondage praise the Lord. fear believers live in fear fear of the unknown fear of this and that and that and that today you see young people even teenagers having high blood pressure this is something that a teenager should have no business with ordinarily but fear 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 of the future how will tomorrow be how will this happen how will that happen and that fear creates a lot of worry matthew chapter 6 jesus took out time to teach and explain again and again on the fruitlessness of worry he said which of you by worrying can add even a cubit to his hair he said consider the lilies of the valley consider the birds of the air they break a fundamental law of sowing and reaping yet your father your heavenly father is benevolent enough to make sure they are not hungry please listen very carefully sooner or later in your christian experience hell will be interested in you 
I guarantee you, except you do not love the Lord and you do not keep growing, a time will come when the impact that you continue to make will attract the attention of hell. Who is this young man who wants to rise and do what has never been done in this family? For as long as you remain down, that's all right. But then you, you, it's like a, it's like a spiritual thermometer. There is a level when you rise to, you attract the attention of hell, and they say, "What is going on here?" If we allow Oh, this young Moses, he can tomorrow be the deliverer. Do not take the baby for granted. Kill him while he's a baby. Don't allow him to grow. The potentials of his growth can be dangerous. And so discouragement comes. Discouragement. So many believers, listen. So many families have had, especially in this time that we live in, their faith shaken, discouraged, students are discouraged, workers discouraged, graduates discouraged, pastors discouraged, church members. You know, it looks like there is this air of discouragement and depression. When you say praise the Lord, people cannot say hallelujah. In their minds, they say for what? Hallelujah comes from the word halal Yeshua. Praise the one who saves. That's what it means. You say, where is the salvation that I should praise him? Talk to an average believer about God. He will prefer you talking about rapture than talking about the faithfulness of God. Don't mention that word faithful to him. Because he tells you, I don't know what you are talking about. That reality is foreign to my experience. I do not yet know God as faithful. Faithful means keeping to your word. Faithful means justifying your integrity at all times. Please listen very carefully. So believers have been attacked here and there. And they think that the attack, listen, they think the attack is just on them just because they are Christians or just because the devil does not want them to have a job or have a child and so on and so forth. Listen, the devil is looking more than you. He's, he's trying to use you to make a statement to God that you are not faithful. So when you read scriptures like, since I was young and now I am old, he says, I have never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed beg for bread. And you think of all your family members in light of this. He said, but this is a lie. This is not true. Foreign to my experience. And when the devil wants to make the statement stronger, he will handpick serious believers. He knows the impact. Listen, the discouragement of a serious believer has more impact than that of a believer that is not serious. Someone who is not serious with God, if he tells you things are not working, you tell him, what did you ever engage? I mean, we, we watched you in, in all that laziness, no prayer, no nothing. But when a brother who has been a prayer warrior serving in church, when a sister who has been serving faithfully in church, Two years, three years, no child. Four years, no child. Then she now gets pregnant. And everybody begins to rejoice. Then at the fifth or sixth month, she will lose the baby in a way that can cause a problem. Listen carefully. That impact, another believer will now say, my God, what is this? If you don't listen to what I'm telling you, a time will come you will not see the need to continue again. There are many believers who are sitting down but they've left God since. They are just coming to church because they know if you don't see him in church, you say, I didn't see you here yesterday. But the truth is that their hearts are not with God again. They, they are not yet bold enough to go to a harbor But you can be sure one leg is already coming out of the things of God. And that includes preachers. The frustration of fasting and praying for genuine spiritual power. Going around and emptying my accounts in need for impartation. Only to return back with nothing that shows I was called. When an aspect of your life has results. And then another aspect does not have results. You can at least find consolation. Listen. But when every area of your life lacks result, it's a cause for concern. Usually it will not disturb you till other brethren start saying, but why is this so? An attack 
on your confidence in God. You started your Christian experience loving God. You made bold and audacious statements about God. And while you made that statement, hell kept quiet like they didn't hear you. I will never leave the Lord no matter what happens. I will stand for him. I will stand by him. It doesn't matter. And now five years without a child. And you don't have the courage to make the same statement you made 10 years ago. I will never give anybody bribe to get a job. Remember you said it. And now here is a job that can reward you. Only if you can fish out 150,000. You can pay it back in a month. Your integrity is at stake. You made a statement that you will never bribe. But jobs continue to pass you again and again. Until the day your loved ones look at you and say you are a foolish portrait of a believer. Watching you is a discouragement to me. At first you would think that it did not touch you. Until you sit later on and say, but God, are you not watching? And then heaven is silent. Are we together? When believers do not get results, they are vulnerable. When believers do not get results, they are vulnerable. Please listen to me. When believers consistently do not get results, they are vulnerable. They are put in a position where the, the faithfulness of God seems to be an issue that, they, that is worth debating about. Behind every attack is the desire to challenge your confidence in God. It's your desire to challenge the integrity of God's word. Hallelujah. I got a text this afternoon about um, a gentleman who killed himself or so. I, I heard the story that there was a gentleman who killed himself. And if I'm right, I was told that the gentleman's brother or relative also killed himself now imagine please ladies imagine that you gave birth to children who killed themselves not that they died not a car accident not sickness you left your child hugging your child in the morning and say make sure i see you in the evening and then you see people running somewhere and you join them thinking it's someone else's child and there you see your child and the testimony is that he killed himself Think of what society will do to you. Think of what other women will say about you. Say, this woman must have been wicked. It means that you do all kinds of things. Sometimes, it seems like death is better than living. This is why people have the courage to kill themselves. And if you ignore a man that killed himself... And don't help other people. Very soon, an entire area will begin to kill themselves. It's a spirit. But I've taught you how spirits work. They don't come and work with nothing. There is a raw material. They use your frustration as a raw material. They use your depression as a raw material. They create a, they, they create a system around your frustration. And that becomes the entry and the access point to your life. But we have come tonight to call the devil a liar. In the name of Jesus Christ. It says, but I know whom I have believed. Hallelujah. And I am persuaded. Listen to me. It is important. I will continue to teach this here, Koinonia. It is important the depth of your spiritual foundation. Remember my teaching a few weeks ago? That the deeper and the more solid your foundation, the more unbending you will be in the face of unfavorable situation. There are people who have dug so deep, they have become like Paul. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. What shall separate us from the love of God? And then he begins to list a lot of things. Shall persecution, shall famine, Shall A, B, and C. Frustration. 
and then the spirit of fear you look around and see fear all over people's eyes fear financial fear marital fear fear of children fear of raising children it will be very irresponsible of any preacher and any man of god to ignore these truths especially in light of the realities that are in our world today when people begin to hang themselves when people begin to run away in discouragement go to the hospitals go to the psychiatric wards and see all kinds of people young people talking to themselves out of depression and frustration something is wrong there has to be a people who will rise and say satan you are a liar jesus is still on the throne and our conviction our convictions will not shake we will not bend say i reject fear say it again say i reject fear one more time say i reject fear fear is a spirit reject it open your mouth in one minute i reject fear you are a spirit i may not know everything about tomorrow but i know the one who holds tomorrow hallelujah he holds tomorrow i reject fear i reject fear i reject fear fear is a spirit and all spirits are received any spirit that is received can be rejected god has not given us the spirit of fear but the spirit of love the spirit of power and of a sound mind fear of excelling in ministry fear of marriage fear of children fear of the future of children fear of finances how can i tell if i will live to see tomorrow how can i tell if i will not die in a ghastly motor accident tonight hallelujah listen to me please look up the believer who will never allow his confidence to be shaken and a believer who refuses to receive the spirit of fear that is the believer that will weary satan to victory literally that you can weary the devil with your convictions that regardless of what happens around you, you can stand in faith and say, my confidence, Lord, more than ever, I trust you. More than ever, I love you. More than ever, I will follow you as for me and my house. When a husband loses his job in one day, by the next month, the wife loses her job. By the third month, the child loses admission or something and three of them are seated with a Bible in the midst of them full of many promises. And then they do not know what to do. Let me tell you something, my brothers and sisters. At that time, heaven is watching even as hell is also watching. Those who will not curse God because of their pain. If your pain will make you cause God you are small if your pain makes you cause God you are weak if your pain makes you cause God your foundation is not deep enough are we together Job's life kept being manipulated so that he will find offense in God even his wife said look Mr. Man this is too bad cause God and die cause God and die While I was still preparing this note this afternoon, one of our precious ladies in the worship team just sent me a text and said, they just told me my father has gone to be with the Lord. I'm sure she woke up this morning preparing with her colleagues to celebrate the faithfulness of God tonight, only to receive a report in a year of extraordinary fruitfulness. That your father has died hmm. Hmm. 
Are we together now? Yes. There is a couple, I don't know if they were able to make it here, but I'll be very impressed if they made it. The devil has attempted to challenge the husband and the wife again and again and again. And that man of God in his resilience, he said something that touched me one time while we were talking. He said, I will never be discouraged and I will never find fault in God. God is faithful. This is the language that moves heaven. That the devil says, can't you curse God? Are you blind? You still maintain your integrity and say God is alive? I got so many text messages from our young ones who wrote jam. Apostle, I've had you change people's jam. This is what I got. This is what I want to get. Pray. And they send sometimes more than 10 times that text. I believe I will die believing God is a miracle worker. But the question is, what if it does not change? <laughs> you don't like this part of God. What if it does not change? What happens to you when your expectation does not come to pass? What happens when what you saw in your vision does not manifest physically? What happens when God tells you by much you are a millionaire and by much you don't even have a job? Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. You are eating this bread because the journey is far. Man of God, what happens when you start ministry with a lot of zeal? Assurances from financial partners. Just that we are here. We believe in your vision. We will stand by you to the end. Four months they say we've tried. Don't come near us for that rent again. I confess to you, my brothers and my sisters, that life can be very trying. Life can be trying to the point that even Jesus would cry at Gethsemane and say, being in the flesh, I thought it would be easier. But now I've carried the burden of men. And even as the son of God, I confessed that men are trying. Surviving the betrayals and the pain. Surviving the nakedness and the shame. Now alone, praying in Gethsemane. Jesus wept, prayed till his tears became like drops of blood. Is God blessing you today? There is a reason behind the attack that has come, is currently on you, or is on the way coming. Let me tell you this. <laughs> there are many believers who convince themselves that they are not creating any trouble. It's the reason why they never get serious with God because they hope that the devil will be busy attacking the Joshua Selmans who are causing trouble. Don't practice the foolishness of Esther. Mordecai told Esther that this plot is for all of us. It's just broken in faces. Phase one is for those outside the palace, but phase two will catch up with you. For as long as you have named the name of Christ, let me tell you, you have made yourself an arch enemy to Satan and he will come. I assure you, Jesus is fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. He's done fasting and the first personality he meets is Satan. And hear what the Bible says. He departed for a season. For a what? Season. That means I'm coming. I don't mean to scare you. But I'm opening you up to the reality of living. He's coming. It's not only God that is coming. Maranatha is not just for God alone. Satan too is coming. Satan, just like faith, cometh. Is it not in your Bible, the thief cometh? He doesn't have to be invited. The thief cometh. To every family, he will come. To every ministry, he will come. To every life, please hear me, he will come. 
Oh, apostle, I've been enjoying my life. Everything has been wonderful. Keep going. Keep going. The world is not too large for his presence to reach. Satan is an expert in mobility. He testified his expertise in mobility before God. Where are you coming from? He said, from to and fro the earth. That's not a problem. I can voyage as many times as it will take to meet you. It will come. Let your finances begin to glorify God. He will come. Let your children begin to glorify God. He will come. Insult me today and thank me years later, but you must listen. Let your ministry begin to glorify God. He will come. Hmm. Let your life begin to glorify God. He will come. Let your home begin to glorify God. He will come. I think it was last week or so, I had the opportunity to counsel a couple. I could not believe when they told me the antecedents of their marriage and the level of, of love and passion and friendliness they had. I could not believe that a couple who were disbonded today would be looking for a divorce. I said, what, what was so bad that you want to go out? Man of God, I've said my own. We didn't come here to debate. It's a conclusion we have made. I said, take it easy. There has to be a way. Hmm. Life, ba. If you don't know God, one day you will sit down on the road and say, before life kills me, let me kill myself. When you see people do foolish things, don't think they were born foolish. Are we together? When people go and buy this rat poison, what they call it, and add it to rice and turn it to eat and die, they are not stupid people. There is a way life can push you. Huh? As a lady, when a man has done your traditionals, has done everything, the invitation letter has come out, and then he just looks at you and casually says, I don't feel like doing it again because somebody told me you are a witch. Go and tell your father they can go with the dowry. I'm gone. At that point, you would think you would smile and say, oh, no problem. What is there? God told you to live my life. You, you will cry and not know what direction to turn to. It is true that life can push you. It is true that life can challenge you. Recently, I had a conversation with a man that broke me. I was going to pray for the man. True story. And the man looked at me and said, Apostle, let me finish the story. He said, as I'm talking to you right now, my beloved wife is in the mortuary. I don't even have the money to go and bury her. I'll not mention tribe, but he comes from a region where burial is not something that comes easy. And the man was just smiling. I said, your wife is dead. He said, yes, sir. Dead. My wife. I stood before everybody to exchange vows. We agreed to grow old together. Now she's gone. You think they didn't pray to raise that body back? The guy I'm talking to you is a born again and tongue talking Christian. What happens? You see, I've been to the mortuary many times, my brothers and sisters. As a man of God, you can imagine what happens when people die. I've been to the mortuary. They have closed me and left me with dead bodies in a mortuary. Alone. Why? Because they believe I'm anointed. And I believe I'm anointed. And I stood before a dead body that would not listen to me. Wake up in the name of Jesus. And the body is looking. There are times when life will act like that dead body. Hmm. There are times when your finances will act like that dead body. There are times when your marriage can act like that dead body. There are times when everything around your life can act like that. Please listen to me, believers. When you pray and nothing happens, 
and you pray again and nothing happens and believers agree with you and nothing happens you must know what to do when the devil launches an attack do you know what to do or do you just know that attack is real hallelujah years ago i counseled one of our precious ladies she's no longer here and this lady told me that once a guy looks at her and says i love you i want to go and see your parents that's the end of it a strange being appears to her as usual and that's the end of that relationship if that guy does not get out of her life the things that will get out of his life you will not his finances just like jonah things will begin to leave I can tell you that lady loves God and she's a Christian. Listen, if an unbeliever goes through certain things, if it's natural, what happens when a Christian woman is barren? What happens when a Christian man is impotent? What happens when a Christian couple are broke? What happens when a Christian man and his wife and their children are standing in the name of the Lord and there is no roof for them that night. They don't know where they will spend the night. Yet Jesus is still Lord over their lives. Your confidence in God and the spirit of fear that comes upon you. A lecturer called me some months ago that he was relieved from his work. Not, not ABU here. One of the institutions. And I said, what happened? And just some issue that he, he truly told me under God. Now, it's not for me to vet the rightness, but from as a man of God, I can tell you I discern he was true. Some persons just cooked up one or two things like that, and that was it. The case had been pending, 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 and finally, they just threw that man away. Out. No job. And the man was telling me, he said, where do I start from? There were monies they were supposed to give him. Nobody is talking about it and everything has gone. I confess to you that life can be challenging. I confess to you that when Satan attacks you, he looks powerful. Because the attack is real. You will see it and sometimes you will wonder, Lord, where were you when this came? But tonight's message is for you. Let's look at a few scriptures. Hmm. John chapter 16 and verse 33. John 16, 33. We are really going to pray tonight. And when it's time to pray, please hold, even if it's prophetically, the hands of your loved ones and everybody you know should be listening to this message. And lift them before God as we cry. John chapter 16 and verse 33. Everyone read with me. One to read. Jesus is speaking. Uh-huh. These things I have spoken unto you. What things? That in me ye might find peace. Why? In the world ye shall have tribulation. Listen. Listen. Jesus is speaking to believers. And saying the possibility of tribulation is something that will be part of your experience. That means acclimatize your mind. Do not think it strange when these things happen. It says, be of good cheer. Why? Because I have overcome the world. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 17. 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 17. Listen to this message, mature believers. And run away from some of these childish things that continue to give us very aberrated views of life. For our light affliction. Why will you use the word affliction for a Christian? One who is in Christ... One who has sustained victory, the fullness of the spirit, the fullness of the Godhead in Christ resides in him. 
Paul is speaking and says, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, he says, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. For our light afflictions. So it is not unusual for believers to go through afflictions. Nobody sits and prays for it. But that is for any reason you find that reality around your circumference. Do not think it's strange. Rather be equipped with the understanding to deal with it to victory. Are we together now? Yes. I will never forget years ago I was encouraging a gentleman. Generally just sharing with him. I told him, I pray for you to get a job. But in case you don't get a job... I was sharing with him certain business ideas and the guy almost shouted on my face. I, I reject, um, you know, that he rejected the statement. I was saying that there will be delay in a job. You know, the Bible says he will not. I, did, I said, no, no, I'm a man of God. I pray. I'm not saying you will be delayed, but I'm saying if this possibility happens while you wait for that blessing, be thinking of this and that. I don't mean to embarrass you, but till today, I'm not aware, except if he got it this year. But till today, he has not gotten a job. The same wisdom he would have listened to and his foolishness. There is a difference between faith and foolishness. They are not the same. The same way a matured mother will be mentoring a young lady who is about to get married and get pregnant. And say, we do not, we, we are not discouraging you. But we are just saying that there might be these possibilities. And that if this comes, there is a wisdom way to route it. No, I reject it. I, my, my womb is blessed. Nobody's arguing it. Until life shows you pepper. And then you turn and say, ah, so this thing is like that. A man parked his car and ran to deal with somebody quickly and came out and met space his car had gone in the afternoon broad daylight the car that was dedicated in church don't forget don't forget almost every church dedicates cars this car was dedicated in the name of the Lord by a genuine man of God. Genuine oil was poured on it. And now a thief enters and the oil did not seem to do anything. The prophecy didn't seem to do anything. That guy kicked that car and ran away with it. And where were the angels that keep watch? Did the Bible not say that they will bear you up on their wings? What suddenly happened to that man who put a speaker, I am victorious, behind the car that was stolen? What happens when a believer is in church and armed robbers are in the house stealing? Have you not heard this? Or you don't say it in church. It should not be said, Abby. That you are worshipping God and rolling on the ground. Lord, I give you my heart. And an armed robber breaks your door. And the all-seeing eye of God does not seem to be able to restrain that robber. He enters your house and goes to look for the areas you just collected and carries it and runs away. You share the grace with joy and go back home into a week long of depression. I'm a man of faith. I'm a man that believes in miracles. But I must teach you the reality of navigating through these things in life. I don't mean to embarrass our precious lady, but one of our ladies here, I remember very clearly one time her mother, it was in a, it was in a night vigil. They were praying, not in a party, not in a club. A night vigil. They were praying, lifting up the name of the Lord. Fiery prayer. Suddenly a woman stops, drops dead, and dies. That's how the mother died. I remember when that lady called me that night, crying. And saying, Apostle, how can my mother die in a place of prayer? 
It's the same thing like saying, how can Jesus die? But he died. How can life die? Life died. How can light be dark? Light became dark. Sometimes the unexplainable happens. Like life dying. Like resurrection being grounded on the cross. <laughs> James chapter 1 and verse 1 to 4. I like what this teaching is doing to you. You will thank me tomorrow. Add it to your spiritual arsenals so that you will draw it forth in the days that are rainy days. For some of you, the dark cloud is already before you. And you will need to know this. James, let's go to verse, um, verse 2. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Why? Next verse. Knowing this, knowing this. Tell your neighbor, knowing this. There are things you need to know. Knowing this. This is your immunity. This is your basis for stability. Knowing this. There are things if you don't know, you cannot rejoice in the midst of pain. It says, knowing this, that the trying of your faith Walk at patience. Verse 4. It says, but let patience have her perfect walk. Do you know what this means? Don't interrupt what is happening. Let patience have her perfect walk. That ye might be mature and complete. Wanting or lacking nothing. Jesus told us very clearly. That it's not unusual for believers to be challenged by the gates of hell and then also the bible did not leave us in the dark that the journey of the believer is not just a smooth road that there are mountains and there are valleys in the making of great men in god's kingdom listen very carefully there is a place where the refiner's fire i preached a controversial message years ago on the furnace of affliction and several people said, don't mind that message. Just believe, you know, and so on and so forth. There is a real experience in a believer's making called the furnace of affliction. I repeat, there is a real experience in the making of men that are as precious as gold called the refiner's fire. It is not the destroyer's fire. It is the refiner's fire. Are we together? Isaiah 43 and verse 1 and 2 says, Fear not, I have redeemed you. It says, I have called you by name, you are mine. Are we together? It says, Isaiah 43, 1 and 2, Fear not, I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. It says, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. There are times that God will not say, I will be with you. He will say, I will help you. But there are other times he says, I'm there. Just find comfort that I'm there. There's no guarantee that I will put my hand in that process. But be assured that my presence is there. <laughs> and through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. Now listen, he said when you walk through fire, you don't pass through fire, you walk. There is a roasting process that takes time. There is a separation. You don't put meat around fire and you have something nice. You drop it there. Then turn it again. Then turn it back to where you turned before. Then turn it again. And when it is done, people enjoy it. Listen, what do you think the anointing is? Have you found out how oil is made? That the threshing floor is not a place of laughter. That oil does not want to go through that train. Believers, we have been spoon-fed into believing that all it takes is to get born again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. I want to be Apostle Joshua Selman. I want to be Benny Hinn. It is doable. It is achievable. But can you drink of my cup and be baptized with my baptism? That's what Jesus said. Whoever told you there is no cup to drink and whoever told you there is no baptism, ah, 
are, there are times when your prayers will deliberately not be answered. This is not a conventional teaching. Many people say, God forbid, all prayers are answered. I agree. It depends on the level you are seeing from. Because the Bible says there is the heel of the Lord. It says, who shall ascend to the heel of the Lord and who shall stand in his holy place? There are planes in the spirit. And not every experience is the same at every plane. There are planes that are general experiences. And you can write a theology from that standpoint. But you climb like the eagle to a mountain where the Holy Ghost defeathers you. Have you seen how eagles mount up and renew their wings? They rise to a high altitude and right there, by themselves, they, they remove the old feather and they are left naked in the cold. And they stand there. And then suddenly, new feather begins to come out slowly. There are things that the tempo has been preset. It will not be accelerated because of your tears. It was designed to be that slow. If the process hurries too much, you will not learn what you should learn. <laughs> mm. That you are trusting God for money to eat. As soon as 10,000 came, God said, carry 1,000 tight. Carry 1,000 your own. Carry 8,000 my own. Go and sow. And you say, why did it come then? I, I'm, I'm, I'm doing something to you that breaks the power of mammon in your life. Because what is coming to you, eye has not seen, ear has not heard. It has not entered the heart of any man. So I need to train you. If 10,000 is difficult for you to receive, and you are shouting, I'm a millionaire, you are joking and flattering yourself. We continue to do these foolish things in church. That's why the world looks at us and says, these people, something is wrong with them. The faith life is not foolishness. People must be educated to understand the pathway. The way to the throne is the cross. You will never, there is no bypass. There is only one line. Man of God, hear me. You admire everyone who speaks under the influence of God's power. Fine. Let me tell you, when the anointing for service comes, it doesn't come as oil, it comes as olive. There is a breaking process that will turn that olive to the oil. It is true. There is a threshing floor in your life that is in the similitude of the threshing floor of Naboth. Where there are things that are threshed there. Unfortunately, it's not wheat, it is you. You are that living sacrifice that must lie there. Hear me. There are times that the things happening in your life can only be interpreted by those who have passed that road. No other believer can see and it can make sense. No. God gives you a rule and says for the next five months, I meet with you from 11 to 3 every night, regardless of how tired you are. And some man of God will tell you, no, it's not in the word. God doesn't do that. Pray when you need to pray. God gave you a will. I agree. And the man is right. He is not wrong. But with respect to your training, violate that instruction and power will be far from you. Far from you. Show us the ancient paths. Would you lead us along eternal highway? We want to follow the ways of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. Show us the ancient path. That so many have left. Would you lead us along eternal highway? We want to follow the ways of Jesus. We want to enter your Listen, the path to glory does not have laughter as part of the equation. Except you are laughing by the anointing. He that sows in tears... A farmer laughing by the farmer has not started farming. 
The size of the instrument alone will take away laughter. But you have to farm. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. There are many people who see every blessed man and just dishonor them. Ah, these young people, they just became rich. Please keep quiet. Find out the cross behind what you see. And then you will know that nobody was dashed wealth. You see young people with anointing, all these young boys, where did they get it from? Go and find out the pain. Find out what they were doing when you were sleeping. Find out the covenants that they, that they tied themselves with like a rope. All these people who have great ministry, be careful, oh, you don't know where they are getting the crowds from. You are joking. You go and find out people's cries and covenants with God. I know a man of God who said when he went to Lagos for the first time, he slept under the bridge. He was not a poor man. God instructed him to give everything he had. He got to Lagos and slept under the bridge like a fool. Imagine if you were his relative and you saw him. He said, sorry, uncle, what are you doing here? He said, God sent me. Imagine that it was your daughter that kind of man married. Won't you carry your daughter back home? But today everybody celebrates him. Listen, my brothers and my sisters, do not think it unusual when you are following the path of champions. It's a lonely road. Did you hear what I said? Do not think it unusual. I speak to you. There are many men and women of God here. You thought by now you will start a church. You are surprised you are still on, tra on training. There are others who are jumping classes and running around. Leave them home and stay quietly with God. Because there is a making. Ah, making. Ask a coach how a champion is built. The coach will subject that person through exercises. The person will run. The person will cry. Coach, I am tired. And the coach will say, no, this is not you. The version of you I seek to produce is not the you I'm seeing. Sometimes when God pushes you, it's proof of his confidence in you. Others got there and God said, no, they've reached the elastic limit. But for you, he says, no, I know what I put in you. Let's push a little more. There are certain levels of glory that I've been waiting for who will push to this level. Everybody stopped here. You can, don't, don't disappoint me. Push a little further. On one side, believers can be attacked. But on another side, without an attack, the default design of the pathway to glory requires, like pilgrim's progress, there are mountains to climb. Listen very carefully. There are valleys to follow. There are times you will sleep in the desert. There are times you will not know where you are going. You will just keep going and hope you are right. We didn't come this far by luck. We didn't come this far by chance. It is true we came by grace, but grace that was not abused. It is not grace that did the work. Grace empowered us to comply. Behind every glory, are tears and blood sleepless nights and sacrifices as any great man champions hear me being a champion is not just a confession ask a pregnant woman when she gives birth to the baby like a dear one here who gave birth and we're all rejoicing but ask her how it was Right now, you are carrying something that others are not carrying. Don't expect them to understand you. If everybody around you understands you, it's a sign that you are not going anywhere. There are times only God can understand you. Let me tell you. There are times only God can understand you. While others are sleeping, the Holy Ghost takes away sleep from you. He giveth his beloved sleep. But from you, he took it so that you will wake up. And you are walking around your house and crying. Lord, what is the name of what you are doing with me? 
he calls it refining. Lord, what is the name of what you are doing with my life? Is this how useless my life is going to be? You have honored other people. Look at what you are doing. At least show me where I'm going. Let me be convinced that you are leading me. And he says, the seeming confusion is part of the process. So that I teach you that you don't have to understand me to follow me. There are times that it's in your obedience that understanding comes. Lord, if you don't show me where I'm going, I will not follow. You will never get to the place of destiny. There are times you start that journey far before it later makes sense. Come out of Ai of the Chaldeans to a land that I will show you. I don't give you no vision for it. Keep moving. Carry your child along because you will kill him sooner or later. These are messages you will not hear in the church again. It's not all about receive. It's not all about be a champion. The anointing does not work like that. There is stability. I show you the way of champions. I show you the way of the ancient. I show you the, the way to build stamina where you are given the keys of territories. To him that endures to the end that will give a crown and a white stone, he said. Please don't let anybody deceive you. If it is that cup, you must drink of it. If it's that baptism, you will be baptized. If it has not started, it will start. So I'm teaching you so that you will understand that when everything in your life looks strange and God says, empty your account. When you were a baby Christian, you emptied your account and in 24 hours times 10 came. So you took that mindset to rush and say, ah, it is God. I know he's Jehovah Sharp Sharp. I agree, but not for your training. Sharp Sharp will be when you are on stage. Then you prophesy to someone and he gets a miracle alert. But I tell you not during your training. You will get no miracle alert. What you will get is the faith to endure. I shared with you my story. Today I pray and people receive breakthroughs. I shared with you years ago. When out of hunger, I took a step of faith and joined a queue in First Bank, believing that miracle alert will come. This miracle alert thing didn't just start now. It was built in the spirit. So then death works in us that life will work in you. Whatever you die to is what you give life to people in. Let me tell you, this is how it works. You have never been disappointed. Forget about carrying the power of God. No. It's not for children. You must taste of this cup called shame. You must taste of this cup called embarrassment. Till your ego is drained. Like a transfusion from someone. And the life that I now live. It is no longer about if you are not healed. I'm not a man of God. No. Your ego is gone. It went with the training. You started the ministry with ego. So every time you want to pray for the sick, your reputation is there. And he said, young man, you can't do ministry that way. It is not about the result. It is about my glory. It is painful to be approved of God. This is why you stand and run your mouth over people that God approved. You will be surprised what happens to you. It's true you are a believer, but you will know that everyone is not the same. Let no man trouble me, he said, for I bear in my body. I'm speaking to men and women inside and outside here. You are in these defining moments, and I must tell you what is happening in your life. Because if you are not careful, you will run around and meet people, and they will say, no, um, it's because you don't have faith. No, I show you the way of power. Let me tell you this. Listen, listen. I don't claim to know everything about the faith life. I am just an effective member of the body. But I tell you this. When I teach people on how the anointing is made. And I teach people how men are made. It's an office. I don't teach you cunningly devised fables. I'm like a lecturer that has been teaching this for a long time. You ignore what I tell you is to your own peril. That which we have seen. 
that which we have heard, that which our hands have handled, the keys of nations will not be given to you just because you prayed. There is blood that must touch that altar. And not some, everything, it must be drained till you are empty. Your tears will not stop him. Not even your fears. You get to a point where all your fears happen to you. And there's nothing else to fear. You have come out of the realm. Not by escapism. I'm afraid. One of the ways boldness is given to you is what you fear is brought before you. So that you no longer can fear. God shows you your fear right before you. You pray that he takes it away but you pass through it. And there's no longer fear. This is the making of men. This is the threshing floor of Naboth. This is how the great are made in this kingdom. Apostle, I'm called into the ministry of kingdom finance. I think all I need is just a seminar and some impartation. <laughs> you are joking. You are even the one who will need to die more than a preacher. Because mammon is a spirit that God even recognized. Abraham, take now thy son, thy only son whom thou lovest. Take him to a mountain. God, is this the price to be the father of nations? I'm not interested. What is that? I wait for a child for 25 years and you ask me to hand him over. Yes, sir. Take over. Take over. Take over. Take over. Take over, over, take 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 over. I have come to the end of myself. Take over, take over, I have come to the end of myself, hallelujah, hallelujah, I have come to the end of myself, hallelujah, hallelujah, I have come to the end of myself. Listen, listen to me. I got to a point in my life where God so dealt with me, it was like there was no life again. That you get to a point where you don't know the name of your life or destiny again. No name. You are like Cain. And the more I kept moving like the wind, I didn't know that's how spiritual men are. Because he says the wind bloweth where it listeth. You cannot tell where it's going or where it's coming. So is one who is led by the Spirit of the Lord. I truly wanted the power of God in my life. And I prayed. I said, Lord, please give me power. I thought the answer would be a bed that would land on my head. And you say, Son, from this day, I have given you power. Power to open doors that no man can shut you are joking power to speak over nations no sir no sir no sir those keys are hidden in your scars you keep them there oh i apologize if you don't like what i'm teaching you tonight but this meeting is for the great because i see that season coming again it's like a cycle and a season comes when there is a new recruitment a new recruitment it's always like that and then the ones that have been recruited God starts working with them 
after some years he says now there is a, an opening again that can scare me that can scare me cause I know I'm dead already in my reason in my seasons I cry out this is the end of me hallelujah hallelujah I have come to the end of myself hallelujah listen please listen to me not every negative thing happening to you is demonic is of the devil N not every negative thing will answer to prayer there are certain things where it is the grace of God that will be sufficient for you there are times in my life I fasted and fasted I didn't know the difference between being full and being empty this is our generation we, we truly have this honor truly have this honor please don't just see every young man you are seeing and believe that just because they are young it means that they were giving certain things as a dash no sir no sir no sir no sir there were nights when everyone would be sleeping I would be on the roof of vet medicine in ABU the roof of it in the night from night till morning in that roof seeing visions and revelations but staying there in that cold with mosquitoes Just a little inconvenience and people begin to complain. You are talking of giving some seed. I never had the opportunity to spend my scholarship once. Once. It was a sacrifice before it arrived. So when today someone says, Apostle, give me your phone, let me send you money. Please, there is a track record. Let's honor the pain of people. Let's honor the pain of people. Man of God, the anointing is for the taking. Grace is for the taking. The pride that we have just because of our one, one or two, two hours prayer. I will never forget times when I would lock myself for three days my eyes will not see the sun i don't know whether it's day or night i don't know whether it's nine o'clock or ten o'clock no sleep with these eyes open praying from morning till night morning till night morning till night Shaka -ta -ka -ta. lord expand this vessel expand this vessel let me be a, a conduit of your power that was a prayer not for myself Lord for your glory let it please you that I will be used as a vessel and one day God vowed a vow and said my son I give you my presence as a gift there is a threshing floor in the life of every believer please hear me I'm addressing those who are being attacked and those who are going through seasons they do not understand. Do not think that it is demonic. Please sit down and give me a few minutes. And then we are going to pray tonight. Let me get back again to those who have been attacked and show you a few keys. It applies to everybody. But please write this down. I remember praying years ago and I said Lord why is it that when I speak nothing happens 
I read the Bible and I saw in the life of Peter that while Peter yet spake these things, the Holy Ghost fell on all they that had him, not all they that believed in him. If your ears could hear Peter, the Holy Ghost will come to you. I said, Lord, why don't I see this in my life? Not for pride. And God let me know that everything in the kingdom is yours for the taking. But there are dimensions. Not all things are possible at every level. There are real dimensions. Number one. The first key that I will give you to minister comforts tonight. Overflow one. I'm seeing lights all over overflow one. This is what I'm seeing. Lights. I'm seeing an impartation. Lights. 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 Just like, like thunder, like lightning. Light. I believe it's an impartation. Just overflow one. Just caught my attention. In the name of Jesus Christ. That which God has in store. Let it come upon you in Jesus name. Number one. The first key that you need to survive these seasons whether a season of attack or a season of pruning and dealing and refining number one never lose your joy please never lose your joy in this kingdom joy is strength never never lose your joy Philippians chapter 4 and verse 4. Please write quickly. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Not always. Always as you go. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I repeat. Rejoice. Joy. Joy is of the Holy Ghost though. Joy is not just clownish laughter. You don't have to laugh to be in joy. Lord, I don't know the name of what you are doing, but I rejoice. I rejoice, I rejoice, I rejoice. I rejoice. I rejoice. True joy will come in form of a melody on your lips. A melody that does not make sense. Sometimes a melody that mocks your situation, still sing it. Joy. Joy. Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 10b. Popular scripture. But many of you don't know where it is in the Bible. Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 10b. It says, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. That the joy of the Lord, that means when you lack strength in this kingdom, what you lack is joy. In the physical world, when you lack energy, you are given food. Is that true? In the realm of the spirit, when you lack joy, I mean when you lack strength, what you are given to eat is joy. Sometimes God does not give you the solution. He gives you joy 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 he said count it all joy count it all joy the shame yes sir the pain yes sir the no admission yes sir the disappointed meeting that I called people and I said sick people come and at the end nobody was healed and that you went back home and somebody sent a text and say next time be a serious man of God before you call us the Bible says, count it all joy it comes alive every time I hear your voice it comes alive every time I hear your voice there's a joy in my heart in spite of all the sorrows that surrounds me and this joy that I have 
only comes alive every time I hear your voice. It comes, it comes alive every time I hear your voice. Can you watch your car on fire? Your 2.5 or 3.5 million. And you stand and say to God be the glory. Great things he has done. Can you watch your job and you stand at the gate of your office. It was once yours but now no longer yours. And say in it oh God I give you glory. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I be afraid? Can you stand before a corpse? And you are looking at a dead body that you fasted for days to come back to life. And you say, in spite of it, oh God, with the tears coming from my eyes, I still give you glory. I thought the dead body would come back to life. But now I have prayed. I give you glory. Never lose your joy. Let nothing in this life steal your joy. Not lack of money not lack of a child please listen to me this gloominess we carry around is cheating us are you hearing what i'm saying yes make up your mind to rejoice in the lord why are you rejoicing and crying i'm crying because of the reality of my pain but i rejoice because joy brings harvest you will sow in tears but you will reap in joy not with joy in joy if there is no joy, there is no harvest. Number two. What do you do in these seasons? Engage in strategic prayer. Listen, the seasons of attack in a believer's life or a season of pruning and making, they are seasons of deep spiritual emphasis. They are seasons of prayer and intercession. That's not the time to pray morning and evening. That's the time to pray anyhow and anytime. Because you are in a season. Your anchor will be your prayer. Hallelujah. Day and night, you are praying. Lord, I don't know what is happening to my life, but I'm praying. Zakataba, kataba, lataba. You have your prayer time in the morning. You have your prayer time in the evening. But every time is prayer time. Every time is prayer time. An evil report. Your wife just lost her child. What are you doing? I am praying. Why? I'm in a season. Is any man afflicted? James chapter 5 and verse 13. Let him pray. Let him pray pray not let him discuss not let him grumble around not let him call god names and say i will backslide let him pray psalm 34 please from verse 4 to 7 and then the last part and we will pray psalm 34 i sought the lord and he heard me and delivered me from what? All my fears. Next verse. We are reading to four. To seven. They looked unto him. And were lightened. And their faces were not ashamed. Six. The poor man cried. And the Lord heard him. And saved him out of how many? All his troubles. Last verse. The angel of the Lord encampeth around them that fear him and delivereth them prayer is a powerful weapon in all seasons but especially this season lord what is happening around my life my wife just got attacked my son just got attacked my job just got attacked i am not understanding what is happening i set myself like daniel onto prayer God grants you grace you can add with fasting add with fasting this spiritual laziness of eating anyhow anytime many believers now fast as a ceremony three days fasting you carry it on your head as if you as if it's, it's 12 years fasting hmm. 
if you love food more than your destiny life will cheat you again and again food is okay oh, but please let me tell you mighty ones you must learn to show food that your spirit man has grown above it there are many of you here you cannot remember I may be wrong I'm not saying you should do it please I'm not saying you should do it but as far as I'm concerned there are spiritual levels that if you get to a week should never pass that you did not fast you are joking you are joking not with what you are doing to hell you are joking seven days ah no Himarama 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 to the king who sits on the throne Himarama to the king Listen, let me tell you this. I will continue to teach you this secret. Real victory, real victory in prayer is gotten while men sleep. Real victory is not gotten shouting around, just making noise. Real men of power contact power when men sleep. May God give you the grace to rise above sleep. I'm praying from the... May God give you the grace to not allow sleep cheat you. That God can wake you up in the night. No light. Off the light. You are praying. Don't allow distractions. You are praying the next thing. You see one of your trousers and it's enough to distract. Off the light. You can use your phone light. You are in the night alone. And watch what happens. You are nobody seeing what you are doing. But there is a register. Every day you are signing. It is the day you get to the stage to preach. That's when God will not disappoint you. You don't come on stage and talk nonsense. Lion of the tribe of Judah, Rose of Sharon, Lily of the Valley, Rose of this and that and that. God is not a scammer. He's not a magician. No track record in the secret place. You will flatter yourself to nothing in, it, in the open. Please learn to pray in the night. Learn to pray in the night. Learn to pray in the night. Receive grace to dedicate night times and pray. God didn't give you a house just to keep things. Turn everywhere to a prayer altar. Turn your toilet to a prayer altar. Turn your living room to a prayer altar. When everyone has gone off the television, don't pray watching a film. Even if it's a Christian movie, you are not praying. Shut it down. Lord, this is me and you here. I don't know what is happening to my life. Shakatos kaprandas ke balakata. A time will come, you'll feel like just leaning. Get up and say, Satan, you are a liar. I'm going far. A time will come, your tongues begin to change. What you are saying, it will never be what you started with. You, are, you, you have entered a level in the spirit. Tongues are languages. And there are levels of power contact. Groanings that cannot be uttered. You get to a point in the spirit where you begin to pray. There are times that only one word, one phrase will come out of your mouth for minutes. Pray it. You are receiving power. Prayer is not something you do in a group. 
so that people will see you and think you're a prayer warrior. Don't joke with your destiny like that. Don't joke with your destiny like that. The Bible says to enter and shut the door behind you. Shut the door behind you and pray to your father who is in secret. You don't need to have a prayer point. You don't need to have a prayer point. Just stay there and begin to pray. And while you are praying, your flesh is weak, but your spirit is willing. Listen, can I tell you this? There is a level of fire you bring on any attack in your life. It must give way. It must give way. Fire is an emblem of the spirit. It's one of the emblems of revival. It's one of the emblems that show that the spirit is in a place. Fire does not only refine. Fire is for judgment. There are times you need to stay like a priest upon the watch. My brother and my sister, if you pray from your heart, some things will shift. You will wake up in the morning and know I shifted this through prayer. There are attacks that only prayer can challenge. Pray for me, pray for me is wonderful. But you must become the priest of your destiny. Can someone just blast in tongues for just one or two minutes? Salamakata. Senakanda skama hasabash. Rakata pakato sopakoto sheketelekata. Emprata seneketo shanikata. Tasete shana haskabaratos. Unto him that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Lord, I'm in a season of my life. I cannot afford to be lazy. I'm in a season of my life. I cannot allow my prayer life go down. It's too risky. Not for this season. Not for this season. This is the wrongest time to be prayerless. This is the wrongest time to be prayerless. Oh, take away slumber from my eyes. Take away slumber, oh God. There are scores to settle in the realm of the spirit. There are things to shift in the realm of the spirit. There are things to align in the realm of the spirit. I need to legislate spiritual realities. While men slept, while men slept, the enemy came and saw tears. Pray. Pray. Outside, pray. Through the king who sits upon the white horse. Through the king who sits upon the white horse. Shela bakata rekotosia. Nimarama. Marama, hey, hey, hey. Marama, to the king who sits on the throne. Marama, to the king who sits on the throne. Hey, Shena Balara. Hey, 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 hey,
Hela barata katos brande katela katos. Ekata brakatos kale kata brasada kata. Karuse sene katos la tos ke mahasa. Woe to them who are ease in Zion. Woe to them who are ease in Zion. To the king who sits upon the white horse. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are praying. Psalm 125. Prayer gives you stamina to pass through seasons. Jesus prayed, otherwise, you would have given up. He said, Peter, Satan desired to sift you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. And when you are converted, Use the same strategy to strengthen, strengthen. Prayer is a strengthener. They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but abided forever. Next verse. As the mountains are around Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people from henceforth even forever next verse for the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous lest the righteous put his hands in iniquity next verse do good O lord unto those that be good and to them that are upright in their hearts we are reading till the last verse as for such as turn aside in their crooked ways the Lord shall lead them forth with the workers of iniquity. But peace upon Joshua Selman. Prayer gives you stability. In the next two, three minutes, you are going to pray. And say, Lord, let this prayer stabilize me. I shouldn't be shaking over everything. I should be able to laugh at certain storms. And say, Jesus is Lord. Lift your voice and pray. Stability. Power. Stamina. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is the strength of my life. Stability, O oh God. Stability, O oh God. The Bible says if you turn aside in the day of battle, your strength is small. Your strength is small. Give me capacity, endurance, stamina. The grace to pass through for the sake of my family. The grace to pass through for the sake of my generation. The grace to pass through for the sake of my, my loved ones. Be strong, be strong, be strong. Be strong in the Lord. Don't be weak, be strong in the Lord. And in the power of His might. Be strong in the Lord. Koinonia, be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. Don't entertain weakness. Be strong in the Lord. You are not the weak ones. You are strong. Hallelujah. The third key I will give you tonight. Number one, never lose your joy. Number two, engage in strategic prayer and intercession. Number three, prophesy. The power of the spoken word. There is no greater time in your life to engage the creative power of God's word than when things just go haywire. 
the power of the spoken word the power of the spoken word numbers chapter 14 and verse 28 numbers chapter 14 and verse 28 Numbers 14 Say unto them As truly as I live Saith the Lord As ye have spoken in my ears So will I do unto you There are times that you don't just pray You pray till the spirit of prophecy comes on you When it does come You speak He said prophesy Speak to the dry bones, prophesy. Oh, dry bones, hear ye the word of the Lord. Said, prophesy. There are times you need to prophesy. There are times you need to speak. Psalms 138 and verse 8. Very powerful scripture. Psalms 138 and verse 8. Please give it to us quickly. We are going to pray. The Lord will perfect that which concerned me. Thy mercy, O Lord, endure it forever. Forsake not the works of my own hands. You lift it in prayer. I prophesy and I declare. The Lord is perfecting everything concerning me. I declare that I come out victorious. The Bible declares that goodness and mercy follow me. You don't just cry and say, hey, yeah, so is this how my life is going to be? This is what I've become now. No, sir. Nothing moves till you prophesy. I prophesied as I was commanded and there was a sound. You see, that's why it is important for a believer to be full of God's word. If you are scripture bankrupt, you will not know what to say. Prophecy is not just when God reveals something like word of knowledge. You can take the word of God and begin to create possibilities. It's important to know the word. It's important to know the word. When it looks like things around you are not working, you go to Psalm 3. Many are they that rise up against me. Many are they which say, where is your God? He says, but thou, O Lord, art a shield for me. You are my glory, the lifter up of my head. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence cometh my help? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of the heavens and the earth. It's unfortunate for believers who don't know the word. You must trust God for grace to sit down and gather relevant scriptures that address the issue of concern and stand up like the priest that you are put those words in the lips of faith like Kenyon would say and begin to release them with true supernatural power the Lord is my light and salvation the Lord is my light and salvation I reject confusion in my life I hear a voice from behind saying this is the way walk ye in it this is how to pray is someone ready to pray listen to me there are many of us who have gotten to the stage in our seasons where it is our prophecy that will bring the morning if you don't prophesy nothing will happen is someone ready to pray if you don't know what to say go and hold the hands of someone who knows what to say and agree with them lift your voice and begin to speak there has to be a scripture that you know he shall keep them in perfect peace whose minds are stayed towards him many are the afflictions of the righteous but the Lord delivered him from them all from them all from them all and I will restore the years that the canker worm has eaten, the palmer worm, the caterpillar, it will give them beauty for ashes, joy for the spirit of mourning. 
that they might be called the oaks of righteousness the planting of the Lord and he shall be glorified behold I do a new thing shall ye not know it I make a way even in the wilderness streams in the desert the Lord shall perfect all that concerns me all the days of my appointed time I wait till my change comes when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion they were like them that dream so said they among the hidden the Lord had done great things for us he said the Lord has done great things for us whereof we are glad turn again our captivity like the streams of the Negev they that sow in tears shall reap in joy I am the head and not the tail above and not beneath I shall lay up gold as dust even the gold of Ophir Gentiles come to my light they are kings even to the brightness of my rising for my shame I receive double But my head shall thou exalt like the horn of an unicorn and I shall be anointed with fresh oil, fresh oil, fresh oil. Blessed in my going out, blessed in my coming in, blessed is the work of my hands, my kneading trough in the name of Jesus Christ. Blessed is a man that feareth the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commands. My seed shall be mighty upon earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in my house, and my righteousness endures forever. pray pray you are not just speaking you are creating declare thou that ye might test be justified for by your words you are justified and by your words you are condemned you are bringing before God your strong reasons above only above only above only above only in the name of jesus above only above only a sign and a wonder a testament of the grace of god a testament of the favor of god a testament of the hand of god a testament of the mercy of god Though weeping endures for a night, joy comes with the morning. Prophesy joy in the morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Genesis chapter 32, Genesis chapter 32, the Bible says, Jacob wrestled with God and he said, leave me for the day breaketh. He says, I will not let you go unless 
Listen, unless you bless me. Here's how God blessed him. What is your name? What is your identity? What have people known you with? I'm about to change it. That's how I bless you. If I blessed you truly, it means something they used to say about you. A proverb should no longer be heard. What is your name? And he said, Jacob, a cheat and a supplanter. He said, thou shalt no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. Why? For as a prince, you have had power with God and prevailed. We are going to pray. Father, change my name. In this season, listen. Change my name means change my experience. Change my name means change the proverb. Let this proverb not be used about me again. That God cannot show him mercy. That God cannot lift my family. Let this proverb change. Like father, like son, no sir. Open your mouth and cry. Change my name. Change my story. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. Jabez, the mother called him Jabez, named him in sorrow. But Jabez was angry. He said, oh, that thou wouldest bless me. Enlarge my coast. Is someone praying? Lord, change my financial name. Change my ministerial name. Change my marital name. Change my destiny name. Out of the abundance of your mercy. By the encounter I have had with you. Change my name. Change my story. Change my name. Give me a testimony. Shut the mouths of the wicked. Prove once again that you are God and that by yourself. Please pray. God answers prayers. Give me a new name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Next prayer point. The Bible says he touched the hollow of his thigh and it became twisted. Lord, may I never depend on my strength. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5. And lean not on your own understanding. It says, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. The next verse says, do not be wise in your own understanding, but fear the Lord and turn away from evil. You are going to pray. Lord, I've trusted my certificate. I've trusted my connection. I've trusted my beauty. I've trusted my spirituality. But tonight I take my eyes away from all of this. As advantageous as they are, they looked unto him and their faces were lightened. I look to you and to you alone. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. We are praying. I take my eyes away from man. It is true that my blessings come through men, but my eyes are fixed on you. Is someone praying? We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Forever Yahweh, Yahweh. Keep praying. We look to Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh. 
Like the brazen serpent that Moses made, he said, Whoever looks to that serpent, the real one will not strike at him. Vain is anything that you put your strength on. So, Jacob, I see you stable without me. I touch your point of stability so that you will be ever dependent on me. The last prayer point. He said he blessed him and the sun arose until then it was night the war happened in the night the weeping happened in the night but then he says the sun arose and Jacob called the name of the place Peniel the face of God he says for I have seen God face to face when Moses saw the face of God, he returned back with a testimony. Is someone ready to pray? Lord, let the sun arise. It is true that weeping endures for a night, but I believe I'm standing at the dawn of my morning. Lift your voice and prophesy. Let my sun arise. Sun arise. Financial sun arise ministerial son arise the encounter is over the lessons have been learned the impartations have been received therefore night time be turned today night time be turned today Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Keep standing. We're rounding up. Let me tell you three things that come into your life when you break through with God. Number one, strange dimensions of favor. There is, a, there is a, an unusual degree of favor. It's God's signature. He writes it upon your life that the training for this phase has come to an end. You have been approved. He uses favor. Dimensions of doors you never dreamt opening. I can tell you this happens. It doesn't matter how the night is. That when your day breaks, you will see favor that will bring you to your knees. When I talk of favor, I'm not talking money. I'm talking of the hearts of kings and nobles. Money is very small. God will take the hearts of kings and nobles and give you. It will be like a charm. You will call on a man and nations will respond. You have become Beulah and Hephzibah. The delight. Number two. Genuine, authentic spiritual power genuine spiritual power not trial and error not like God will come not like God will move something solid upon you provable genuine spiritual power you speak the purposes of God to men's lives and you will shift lives overnight power 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 Number three, the 
the third thing that happens to you when you stand with God is that God multiplies both your spiritual and your physical influence he increases the reach of the grace he has put upon your life yes sir yes sir every man is limited by the jurisdiction a portion for his grace to function there are men who can stand from anywhere and speak over nigeria it doesn't matter the grace given to them and the expansion they have attained unto in the spirit covers that sphere elijah stood in one place and spoke over an entire land there were times when jesus had to leave one land to enter another land to pray for a person what was the reward of the five two and one talent greater territory greater influence in the spirit when kings conquered certain lands they had increased territory america is called america today because it's the unity of many states one american state can be three times nigeria one state are we together now yes is why it's called united states of america in nigeria you can pass through a state in 30 minutes and there are times in the state you will fly for hours from one state to the other there is no state that is more than one hour 10 minutes my duguri to lagos is the farthest distance one hour 10 minutes exactly you are there but you will fly for hours that is the reason why whoever sits as the president of that territory must be respected by every devil whether they like it or not it is the reason why the american president is the number one president because there are many in one state is the destiny of many nations the per capita income of just one state will swallow up many african countries so when god expands your sphere dimensions where your grace would not reach now you can speak from one place and they can hear from home before you had to go home for them to hear but now god has expanded your influence and they say won't you come again you say no problem he has upgraded the grace for i am also a man under authority right from where i am i can say to one come and he cometh go and he goeth it's like a ranking in the spirit. One of my old secondary school classmates, my father got to meet with him recently, and now he's a major in the army. I think at the threshold of the next rank. What's the next rank? After, after major. Lieutenant Colonel, yes. I think soon that's what they are going to give him. He used to be a fearful, chicken-like young guy. I remember when they take us from Joss to go to our school, he would start crying even before we go out of Joss. I never cried once to leave home. It was a delight and a pleasure to get out. That guy was so girlish and feminine. I wondered, but that guy today is a major sometimes he would stand and do some things you know he could see a roach cockroach and you know how ladies would jump but today he can tell me kneel down hands up you civilian except for the fact that when i sent the lackest thou anything can we spend two minutes to pray? Let's pray the prayer of Jabez. Enlarge my territory. Please lift your voice and pray. Enlarge me, O God. Take away the spirit of smallness from my life. It doesn't give you glory that I remain small. Not after an encounter with you. Not after seasons, defining moments with you. Pray the prayer of Jabez.
Oh, that thou wouldest bless me. That thou wouldest expand, enlarge my territory. Pray for Koinonia. Pray for your business. Lord, enlarge my territory. He said, where we meet with you is too straight. Let us move beyond the Jordan. Please pray. God is hearing you. You are not wasting your time. It has been said, no one rose beyond certain levels in your family. But can you pray the prayer of Jabez? Expand my territory, oh God. I will go where the fathers have not gone. I will eat the milk and the wine of Canaan. I will not die in the wilderness. He did not bring me from Egypt to leave me in the wilderness. There is a land that flows with milk and honey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want to pray. You don't have to come out. But I want to pray specially for people in this place tonight. You just sense in your life that there seems to be a fierce attack on your life. This is not just a dealing with God. This one you know is demonic. It's like all hell breaking loose over you, over your family, over your spiritual life, over whatever it is, your business. I want to pray for you and I want you to believe. It is for this cause that the Lord says to not neglect the gathering of the brethren because it's an opportunity for a supply of his power. Even when your seasons come to the end, there has to be a man. He said, destroy it not for there is a blessing in it. I want to pray for such people. Suddenly your prayer life just went down. You come fast from 6 to 6. By 11 you are almost collapsing. You can't even breathe. It's an attack. As a man of God, you found out that it looks like you opened the Bible and your page is empty. You are not seeing anything again. Every verse looks confusing. Every. Something is wrong. Strange attack on your church. Members are suddenly leaving. Everybody is suddenly hating you. People you have labored to raise in the gospel are now turning against you. It's an attack. You used to prophesy correctly but now you just found out that you entered a season of nonsense everything you say is not correct word of knowledge not correct your prophecy not correct it's an attack it doesn't mean you are wrong it means the devil is attacking your credibility so that you will no longer be trusted finances you are a hard-working diligent person all of a sudden it looked like holes came in your pocket all doors just closed no destiny helper again even those who promised to help you it's as if something turned their backs against you it's an attack my brothers and my sisters you need to pray all of a sudden your children started becoming something else people you have labored and trained they now no longer listen to you you say a they say b you say keep quiet they tell you to keep quiet something is wrong strange devilish dreams nightmares you can't dare lie down on your bed to sleep here they come pressing you molesting you attacking you it will take the grace of god to struggle yourself to wake up it's an attack 
What of reports from home? You are enjoying the glory of God, just about to take a nice step. They just call you. They pay you some areas that you are trusting God to just use and buy a small land. And you hear an attack that someone needs chemotherapy or, or whatever it is. And they need to spend 35 to 100,000 every week. And it is you they are depending on. Say Devora. Say it again. Say Devora. I say Devora. Because you don't do it. Everybody says you are a wicked young man who is allowing your father or mother to die. And you pay 70, 70,000 in, in five or six weeks. Your money is gone. There are many ways believers can be attacked. And I pray for you. I don't know who is in that category. But I believe the Lord put this meeting tonight. You don't have to kneel. Just believe. Believe. Jesus, the Son of God, I believe in you. Jesus, the Son of God, I believe in you. I believe in you. Father, you have anointed me for the sake of your people. And I bring before you, O oh God, the thousands of people in this place thousands and millions others from around the world who are being fiercely attacked by the devil and his cohorts in an attempt to corrupt your testimony over their lives i bring before you families that have been fiercely attacked businesses fiercely attacked destinies marriages spiritual lives ministries churches and by that attack your people have been discouraged they have been exhausted and frustrated tonight in the name of jesus i decree and declare that every spirit responsible for this attack by the spirit that raised christ from the dead we crush the works of darkness now. Yeah. Pay attention, I'm praying for you. I decree and declare that if this is as a result of territorial covenants, activities of ancestry that authorize darkness, to launch attacks over lives, over churches, over ministries, over individuals, mysterious diseases that you had no part in. I pray by the God of heaven tonight, let there be liberty for you. Let there be liberty for you. Let there be liberty for you. I challenge suicidal spirits over this territory of Zaria. The spirits that cause young people to kill themselves and waste their lives in the name that is above all names. We command that spirit is banished from this territory. The spirit of discouragement. The spirit of exhaustion. In the name of Jesus, we declare be gone now and forever. He says the Lord shall deliver you from six things. Yea, seven things. And one of it is the scourging tongues of men. The scourging tongues, pronouncements work, my brothers and my sisters. Some of you 
acted in a way and manner that out of anger some men of God opened their mouths under the influence of the grace God gave them and they made utterances concerning your destiny like Elisha some of you laughed at certain men of God and they made utterances and there are things devouring you you cannot explain listen there are some of you his parents maybe be, before you now started to be serious with God you talk nonsense to parents and they looked at you and said may your children do the same thing for you you would think they were just joking the realm of the spirit is a legal realm believe it or not whether you believe it or not doesn't change that reality the scourging tongues like a scourge a scourge is a whip a cane that the, that the mouth of a man can become a whip over a man's destiny it takes people to speak also over your life there are some of you maybe you were in certain churches and you ran your mouth against men of God laboring in the spirit either because of their weaknesses because of their mistakes you opened your mouth some of you maybe even insulted them directly and like Noah they got up from their sleep and cursed you and said a servant of servants shall you be he said God forbid it will not happen but it's happening and you are seeing it yes ago I remember a man who I think he said something against Bishop Oyedeko and Bishop Oyedeko cursed him and he you know laughed it over and believed it will not happen and for the next few years of that man's life things went down until he went for prayer and a true prophet of God said ah, I'm trying to bless you and I'm seeing that that blessing is not coming something you have offended a man of God he said to go and if you can't apologize to him you may not have time to do all of that but that prayers need to be offered otherwise you will be surprised how long that thing will remain on your head there are things in your life that should not go wrong something is making it go wrong exactly what the blessing does is what a cause does in the negative hallelujah the anointing is two-sided it blesses and it judges I want to pray for you because I believe that sometimes this our generation need the prayer of mercy we have abused and insulted men of God some of us with the young revelations we have we have insulted every father of faith call them all kinds of names insulted our reverence in the Orthodox churches our priests in our catholic churches you know presbyterian churches just because we are filled with the holy ghost we laughed at them in sarcasm and made nonsense statements and god had it father in the name of jesus i pray again the bible declares that a curse causeless shall not stand but the bible also declares that your mercy overrides judgment i stand oh god by the privilege of your grace and I stand in advocacy for your people that in any way we have become victims of the scourging tongues of men let the mercy of God let the blood of Jesus that speaks better things than the blood of Abel tonight let it speak on behalf of our lives let it speak on behalf of our families let it speak on behalf of our businesses. Let it speak on behalf of our ministries. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Therefore, I decree and declare that any pronouncement on the life of anyone causing destruction by the blood of the eternal covenant from today, let it be lifted from off your life forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. lastly let me pray for those who it is not an attack from the devil there are just seasons you are passing through that is refining you to be as gold 
Father, I pray you are not careful when it comes to making men. You have standards that cannot be bent. And Lord, some of these standards, we, we admit that in our humanity, they are hard. There are standards that will stretch us from every dimension. Therefore, Lord, for the sake of your people, listening, following from around the world, and even here, who are passing through seasons of pruning and training and building, let grace be supplied tonight. Let strength be supplied tonight. Let hope be supplied tonight. I decree and declare like a faithful soldier, you will pass through it and emerge as gold. Amen. That out of this season of training will come great anointings, Amen. great ministries, Amen. great destinies. Amen. Let the character God seeks to birth, let it be birthed. Amen. Let the discipline God seeks to birth, let it be birthed. Let the spirituality God seeks to birth, let it be birthed. Let the endurance God seeks to birth, let it be birthed. In the name of Jesus Christ, stamina for you to endure the mockery of men. Stamina for you to endure the sacrifices you will have to make. And I declare that at the end of it, God will write his signature upon your life you will be a possessor of something divine and something powerful in the name of jesus lord we thank you for tonight's teaching that as simple as it came we place an anointing upon it let it minister to your people at the points and the seasons that they will need it in the name of jesus particularly to your precious people in this ministry. In the name of Jesus, there will be testimonies of the wonder-working power of this teaching. We give you all the glory and all the praise in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Give Jesus a big, big hand. Clap. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Very quickly, before I take the announcement, few minutes, I feel very fulfilled teaching what I taught tonight because it's in obedience to the Holy Spirit. Please listen. All the overflows inside the main auditorium. There are people here who are saying, Apostle, I've been waiting for you to make an altar call because I cannot leave this place tonight without totally handing everything over to Jesus. There are people here and we need to honor that decision. You are outside, listen. You are inside, please. You are saying, man of God, I need Jesus and I need him fast. I need him now. Others, you are rededicating your life. Wherever you are, I hope the space will be enough. Please make your way quickly. Let's clap for them as they come. Be bold, stand up and make your way to the front. There are people coming from outside. Please allow them to come and clear the way for them quickly. Are there people in here? God bless you. God bless you. Let's celebrate them as they come. Nothing to be ashamed of. You're coming from outside. Please run. Come and stand right here. He's giving you a new beginning. Apostle, what if they see me? Don't mind them. You are standing before Jesus Christ. Please keep coming. Keep coming. I'm not sure if I'm born again. I'm not sure if I'm a child of God. I just like the things of God. Join them. Join them and let there be that assurance once and for all tonight. Jesus said, if you are ashamed of me before men, I will be ashamed of you before my father. Quickly, please. Young, old. We take the issue of salvation very, very seriously. Jesus said, ye must be born again. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much. 
If there are still people coming, please quickly, they can come and join. But I appreciate every one of you. It takes a lot of courage to come and stand here. And I salute you for making this decision. Let me request that you lift your right hand and pray passionately after me. Just repeat after me. But do this from the depth of your heart and with understanding. Say, Lord Jesus, I love you. And I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died for me. Tonight, I receive your life. I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. And I declare that Jesus is my Lord, is my Savior, is my friend. From today, the grace to walk in victory is mine. I declare that I'm a child of God from now and forever. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Thank you, Father, for these ones. You have brought them by your spirit. The Bible declares that as many as will come to you, you will in no wise cast away. Receive these ones and empower them to live victorious lives. Let tonight not be an emotional decision. Let it truly be a decision that will move them from one dimension of glory to another in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. I salute you for this great decision. Praise the Lord. May I please request that you just walk down the aisle, just turn every one of you. There's a lady waving her hands. I would want you to please move this way in concert. They will lead you to a group of people who will talk to you very briefly on our behalf. Is this the best you can do, Koinonia?